Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk right here on Dork Tales. I'm your Dungeon Master, Kelly. I use he and him. And folks, I am very excited to be heading back into this because we've taken a couple of weeks off between chapters, and now we're back here with Chapter 3, The Spider's Web, as we prepare to head to the ruins of Thunder Tree, which just sounds like we're going to a music festival to me, like Fire Island. Uh, but uh, maybe we are. Who knows? Uh, so, folks... If you are joining us now for the first time, then you've missed a few episodes. Uh, the characters have traveled south from Neverwinter to the small town of Phandalin, where they have become embroiled in a couple of things. A kidnapping of one of their good friends. A fight with a bunch of ruffians that they managed to evict, but were unable to capture their leader. Now they are going to try to find where their friend is being held by hunting down a druid who knows the location of the ransom spot, the ransom spot, the kidnapping spot, the, the place where he's being held. Um, so that is tonight's adventure as they're heading north to Thunder Tree and all of the adventures there. But before we jump into that, we should probably find out who we're playing with. Let's start with Christine. Hello, I'm Christine. I use she, her pronouns. And tonight I get to play Lady Alessandra Celeste Martin Baraquel, our Isamar Paladin, Oath of the Watchers. Who else Beautiful. Should uses she, her pronouns? Beautiful. In the corner, we have Caitlin. Hello. Hello. I'm Caitlin. I use she, her pronouns, and tonight I'll be playing Anthea Briarfoot, the halfling, artificer, alchemist of the group. And I'm very excited to be back. And to murder many people. And to have my cool rock. Show off your cool rock. It's a very cool rock. It's a for very those cool listening. rock. For those listening on podcast, it is a cool rock. Oh, perfect, perfect. I just thought you were like like describe video it. No, just let them let their imaginations run wild. It's a it's a heart shaped <laughs> red rock that is yeah. it is just fantastic. Also that's fantastic funny. is the person beneath you. It's Amy. <laughs> oh hi, that's me. I'm Amy. Pronouns are she, her, they, them, and I am playing Lyric, the uh, tiefling bard college of creation. Ooh. Also she, her, they, them. Nice. Also, she, her, they, them is Krista. Hello, I'm Krista. She, they, her, them. Uh, and I play Camilla Elzarin, our Dampier Battlemaster fighter. Fantastic. And also fantastic, our last but not least player, it's Chris. Hey, that's me. And I remember to unmute my microphone for it. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm playing Sindri, our half-elven monk, Way of the Ascended Dragon. And I am, uh, I use he or they pronouns, and Cinder uses he him pronouns. Uh, I'm super excited and happy to be back. Uh, and it was a very, very cool rock. It's a very uh, cool rock. I'll describe video. It is fair. Um, all right. So, uh, folks, before we begin, I need to do a big thank you to our sponsor for the night, Bookworm Games. Bookworm Games is a Vancouver area distributor of all things gaming. That's right. You can get dice, a more than 170 different types of them. You can get edible dice. You can get gemstone dice. Don't eat the gemstones, please. They will. They're, they're worse on the way in than the way out, I'd imagine. Your teeth wouldn't appreciate it. Um, but you can also get resin, liquid core, uh, your regular acrylic ones. You can even get wooden ones and uh, ooh, just, uh, just the fanciest dice. Uh, not only that, but they have a wonderful selection of teas for the holiday season. They also have familiars, dice bags, dice bins, and soon, dice tables. Go to Bookworm Games and use code DORKTALES to save 10% on your order. And if your order is $100 Canadian, which if you're anywhere else besides Canada is pretty cheap. Um, your shipping's free. Thank you to Bookworm Games for being our sponsor yet again. We really appreciate it. And we really appreciate all of you watching tonight. Uh, folks, before we go in, we have had a couple of episodes since we, or a couple of weeks since we have played an episode. Does anybody have any questions? What we're doing, why we're doing it, who we're doing it for? No more than I already had. Okay, good. Anyone know what the end of this sentence was supposed to be? I wrote head of and then left a blank. Wow, no idea. Oh, cool. mm, good to know. I, 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 my question was, uh, do we know the horses' names? Oh, that was my question too. Sorry, I got really excited. <laughs> yes, actually, I actually had, had the had. exact same question. Yes, they are. They were precious. <laughs> I got lady, that was... Lord Rain, and Penelope. Ah, uh, I think I have. I have lady. precious written down. Oh, I don't know how I wrote down precious. I don't think I wrote it down because I think it. Oh, oh it was lady. Maybe not. Oh, hold on. I, check their notes. No, I, I also forgot, apparently. 
I will note that I am riding rain. I did, in fact, note that down. Nice. I can't remember who I was writing. I didn't write anybody else down because I didn't care. Yeah. But I wrote mine down. <laughs> so the premise is that you're heading off to the ruins of Thunder Tree to hunt down that druid who knows where Cragmaw Castle is. I was going to say Cragmaw Keep because Chris ruined me. Because of course you were. Because of course I was. That's just the law. Uh, so uh, without further ado, folks, let's jump in to Fandelver and below the Shattered Obelisk. You ride north, making your way along the road to Neverwinter, pressing ever northward. It's only about 50 miles away from your, from your quarry, which means a simple trip, a day and a night up. As you make your way across the uh, the landscape there, riding away from Phandalin, a bit of trepidation hangs in the air. But soon enough, you'll find yourselves well away and truly along the Sword Coast. Your horses are enjoying the run. Uh, as you are taking them to the north, you will eventually have to water them after about two hours of... of Decent riding. There's a small pond off to the side of one of the roads, and as you make your way over there, does anybody have a passive perception above 15? Mine's 15. Yours 15? Okay. Anybody have a 16? Nope. I believe the next highest is 12, for the looks of it. Perfect. Then I am going to just make a couple rolls then, using 15 as my DC. Okay, that's one pass. That is not. You're about 20 miles to the north of Phandalin by the time that you stop to water the horses. There's a small pond that winds its way around some trees, feeding, feeding these old growths. There's a thin layer of algae covering the pond. The woods here are fairly dense. As you are looking around, and just keeping an eye on things, as the horses eagerly drink the water. It turns that you can lead a horse to water. Sindri, you keep your eyes open, and just on the other side of just on the other side of where the horses are are watering themselves, you are going to hear a twig snap. Huh. Um, if I'm like, hmm, I wonder who's probably near me. Uh, I might just give them like a casual little kick, kick on the side of the foot and point towards the woods. Who would help Sindri uh, water horses for probably the, one of the first times in his life? Uh, Lyric is next to you on the map. Oh, perfect. And there we go. Probably Lyric. Yeah. So how do we get them to drink it's, is it okay to drink with them for them to drink with algae i think they're just kind of shrugs <laughs> you want to make me a survival uh, roll sure okay we're starting off strong with a nat one. <laughs> oh yeah it's it's good it's protein this, oh that okay fine. sure uh cindy will give uh uh lyric a little kick in the the side of the boot and just kind of point off towards the woods casually and Is then kind what? of like you trying to communicate anything specific? Yeah. Follow me. Like, look over there. If Lurk's not getting it right away, he will just say it. Oh. What's over there? Something. And Something. as That's... you say that, can you do me a favor? What is your armor class? Me? 17. 17? Oh my god, that's not a hit. So I'll try to hurt them more. And let's do it. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, uh, there is going to be a whistle from the other side, and an arrow is going to slam into a tree next to your head. Can I get an initiative roll off of everybody here? Um, oh, Lyric and Carmilla, or pardon me, Lyric and Sindri, you are not surprised. Please arrange yourselves around the pond as you feel that you would be, and I will drop some haunts in here as well. Oh, come on, I have a horse. 
I'm gonna get you. Look some... at my horse. My horse is amazing. That's true. There's a lot of horse. How dare you? <laughs> Do you like the time vortex? That tastes just like raisins. <laughs> okay, hold on. Just grabbing horses because there are a lot of horse tokens that I have apparently. I did not realize how many horse tokens I had. All right, let's swap over to our maps as we have initiative. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'll turn my mic off when I'm just like talking to myself. No, 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 that's what we're here for. All right, there is going to be an explosion of energy on the other side of the pond as you see four figures emerge from the shadows and let's take initiative right here what do i got i've got a 14 and a 12 and a 17 and a 5. okay so okay. turn off the horse noises all right checking initiative right now uh i have so in our chat, it starts at 14 with um, Lady Liliana, Christine. Okay, so I round. have... So I think Sindri has 17. Sindri has 17. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Sorry, I meant so... just because there's uh, just the continued the numbers. Sounds good. Um, okay, so then I have... Then I have Ella. Then I have... have Carmilla, then I have Lyric, then I have Anthea, and then I have the fourth one. All right. There is an explosion of energy on the other side as an arrow like flies out, nearly hitting Sindri. And as that occurs, you are going to see on the other edge of the pond a couple of hobgoblins. Leonin noses, red fur, armed to the teeth and with armor, stepping out of the brushes. And it's going to be their turn. He's going to take a second attack at you. Uh, and that one is going to be a shot that is going to be... Uh, going to hurt them more for that. That's going to be a hit on you, Sindri, unless you don't have... Um, I do uh, have deflect missiles. Damn it. Uh, okay, it's still I just reduced the damage. All right, so uh, go ahead. That is going to be a total of four points of piercing. Uh, it will, in fact, not be. I will take. I will reduce that to zero. And okay. um, because I really want to, I'm going to use a key point to catch it and throw it back to them. Sounds good. Go ahead. Give that to me. Let's go. Get him. Uh, does a 22 hit, or sorry, a 21 hit? A 21 hits. All right. So it's probably not going to do that much damage, but it is really fun. So it's like one of the best parts of being a monk. Uh, take six points of damage, please. Oh, no. All right. Describe how that uh, slams into their body. Um, so he's just going to be like hand, hand talking to Lyric, grab it out of the air and immediately throw it back without looking. And then this... turn around and let's kind of be like, you're first. He's going to grunt and grab the arrow in his chest. Um, not so much grab it, but holding, like he drops his bow, lifts a shield and smashes the arrow out of his chest, leaving it half broken, embedded in his armor and meat and is going to point at you. Uh, all right, Sindri, it's your turn. So I've learned my lesson where I'm not going to run up necessarily directly right into the middle of them to fight them all. Uh, but I will start moving my way over there. Uh, five, or 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Is there a big rock here that gives cover? There is. It is a giant rock that gives gives uh, full cover, actually. 35, 40. And I'm going to take the dodge action. Sounds good. Oi, come get some. Beautiful. All right. Uh, I'm going to pause here for one sec. I just have to update something that I apparently didn't update. Cool. Uh, I am good. sorry for bringing up uh, the new grounds because I now have Narwhal stuck in my head. 
Narwhal, <laughs> narwhal, swimming, swimming in, the in the ocean. Oh, shit. Causing a commotion. Causing because they awesome. are so awesome. Yeah, I have beans, lots of beans, lots of beans, lots of beans. <laughs> Brain poisoned. Internet ruined me. The ruin. I mean, that's that's literally how millennials exist, right? Internet brain rot. Oh yeah. Internet brain rot. Okay. Cool. That was as quick as I could do it. There we go. All right. So Sidri, you rush across, sheltering yourself behind the rock. Uh, as you do, another hobgoblin is going to uh, lurch forward and is going to go five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You know what? I'm going to spend to hurt them more to rush forward and engage Alessandra. Uh, Alessandra, this hobgoblin, this, this towering Leon at about six foot five is going to rush forward brandishing a slightly serrated scimitar. Um, actually, it's more of a longsword, but it's going to take a slash at you. Ooh, uh, and that's only going to be a 13. That does not hit. Okay. Um, yeah, that's going to be there. Um, you are going to be able to grab your your shield in time to deflect it out of the way. It's going to snarl in your face as you deflect and go, ha, you're going to do well. Bringing a prize from the spider. All right. And five, ten, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to spend another Hurt the More to rush forward that extra five feet. And another Hob is going to rush up and take a swing at you as well. That's a 13. This dice only wants to roll 10s. Uh, it rushes forward, and uh, this time you are going to have your sword up and are going to be able to deflect the blow, uh, taking on two hobgoblins at once. Uh, Ella, you are surprised, but I'm going to spend a something good happens to let you act. All right, then. Uh, one sec. I just need to double check one thing that I was going to... My plan for when my turn came around... I can take it something good happens back. Sorry? I can take this something good happens back. I just need to double check something about it because there's now two That's people fine. in front of me instead of the one I was intending to attack. So I just want to double check if something does a thing. You're just that badass. I don't think it does two th people, but I just want to double check. It does not. Okay. Um, but I'm still going to do it because... Fuck it. Divine smite, asshole. <laughs> Okay, uh, so remember, you don't actually have to say the smite um, unless you're casting it as a bonus action. You don't have to declare until after you hit. This is true. Um, so I am going to try and hit him with my sword. Okay, go ahead. Uh... Did you yes! Finally! Nat 20! Okay, I'm guessing you're going to smite. Are you attacking the one on your left or your right? The one that you have by the shield or the sword? Uh, the one immediately in front of me and not... Kitty corner. Sounds good. Make me roll me damage. And smite is what? 2d8. Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, I need a calculator real quick. One sec. Uh, and also, that's an inspiring critical. So who do you give inspiration to? Oh, uh, let's the, do... Carmilla is the next in initiative. Let's do and Carmilla I, then. Cool. And I have one more something good happens to spend. Okay. And with this, do I reroll my dice for smite as well? You double all dice. Pretty high. 41 points of damage, please. Excuse me? Beep, beep. Well, it's a d8 for the sword, which doubles to 2d8. 
And Divine Smite is 2d8 for a first level spell slot, so it's 4d8 plus two. Holy crap. Um, okay, uh, I want you to describe this for me, uh, knowing full well that you just did more than three times this thing's max HP in damage. Um... How does this look? Your sword turns into a lightsaber. It glows with divine light. I think she gets an overall little glow. And yeah, the sword just glows with divine fire. And she will bring it down on him. And I think he just crumbles to ashes like fire burns through him. Oh my god. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. Um... My god is hideous. All right. Uh, anything else you're doing on your turn? Uh, no. Because I think the Divine Smite was a bonus. Yeah. I believe that Divine Smite... It doesn't Smite... actually... No, it states on yeah. a melee Yeah, weapon so attack. Divine Smite is just an add-on. It's only a bonus action yeah. if you are casting a spell to give yourself a smite. This is true. Uh, so, well, on that point, since that wasn't a spell, I will bonus action shield of faith on myself. All right. Sounds good. And Carmilla, I'm going to spend something good happen so that you are not surprised. What do you do? Exciting. Um, I guess I'm going to go at this guy here. Uh, the, one the one next to that Ella? was next to Ella. Okay. To Alessandra. Uh, is this water super deep? It's not. You can walk along. You so you can move along the edge of it, and it's just rough terrain. So, uh, so you can pl basically plunge through it. It'll just be rough terrain around the edge. Okay, I think I'm I'm okay on distance to go from there to there. Yeah, it's 20, 20 feet, so that should be okay for the extra five. Um, cool. Uh. She's going to draw her sword and okay. be very careful to not uh, take more ponytail off of Alessandra. Um, there are literal ponies here you could take tails off of. This is true. And then I have advantage on this. You have inspiration. Inst you can spend it right now if you want. Sure. Might as well, right? Uh, it's a 16 and a 17. Uh, Those are... So <laughs> I guess that will hit. Those are both going to hit. Roll me... Uh... Is this just one attack? Um, it's just one attack, but I am going to use a superiority die to make this a distracting strike. Okay. So I add a d8 to damage, as well as the next attack roll against the target by an attacker other than me has advantage if the attack is made before the start of my next turn. Sounds good. So there's my d10. Oh, oh, that's an 8 and an 8, so that's 16 plus 3, so 19 damage. Um, he's going to be very distracted. Um, you know what? I will let the distraction carry on to the person who gets hit with his head. Who do you want that to be? <laughs> uh, can I, I I can only really see the one. There's one... That's fair. The from... other one's behind rocks. So Yeah. Can, can I say that um, as she goes to run at this one... Uh, she smacks one of the horses on the way by, so it charges the one behind the rock. Yeah, and that's a distraction. That. Okay. Okay, so the horse is going to be over there. I guess I should make the horses bigger because they're medium sized. Whoa. Or large sized. <laughs> large horse. They need to be like just too long. Like, Very big square. horse. <laughs> if I do that, then they're gonna look awful. <laughs> I know, but like that—that's the size horses should be. Is they shouldn't be a full ten by ten. The humongous horse. Yeah. Horse. Oh, no. Have you ever seen some overlap. horses? How they use their hindquarters? They're just lost. Very true. They are capable <laughs> of taking up that space. Sorry, it's just very funny to me. Like humongo horse. <laughs> horse mungus. I'm feeling so small right now. You are so small right now. Um, okay, so that's going to charge at that one. Uh, anything else you're doing on your turn, Carmilla? Uh, I think that's all I got, because I don't have any bonus actions. All right, perfect. Um, then that is Lyric's turn. Lyric. Okay, step one, let's do some bardic inspiration. I'm going to give that to 
Let's see. Uh, Ella and Carmilla just handily dealt with those two, so I'm going to send that over to Sindri. Okay. And this is going to also include the mode of potential. So, uh, you now have a fun little musical note floating around you about within five feet of you. Yep. Last until the bark inspiration die is lost. Looks like, yeah, so this one's, a, I think, a musical note. And then when you use it, it has an additional effect depending on whether you use it for an ability to check, an attack roll, or a saving throw. And I can put that in the chat in a second. So you might say fun. that Sindri's enemies are in treble. Blah, yes. blah. <laughs> Thank you, Lyric. Come on, that was so basic. <laughs> All right. Well. All right, uh, let's get back to the double time. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, what else are you doing? We're going to waltz Bonus through action. Them. I know, right? Yep, and then actual, I'm going to, let's see, can I actually see? I can ma see the one that's hanging out behind the horse, can't I? You can see the one that's that's getting charged by the horse, yes? Yeah, yeah sure. That's within my range, I believe. Okay, I'm gonna give him I'm going a. To I'm gonna give him partial possible. cover because of a horse. But okay, that'll just affect fair. his AC. So go ahead. Okay. And you have advantage to hit him, though. Oh, I do. That's you do. Yeah, because he's distracted. Yeah. Right. 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 Okay. Let's maybe pull out a couple more dice because those two, that dice was being rude. Oof. The Mother music puns in the chat are pretty great. I'll have to go take a look at them in a sec. Um, so, w <laughs> thanks for the advantage, because, um, yeah, that's plus five makes that a 11. I don't think adding my proficiency bonus to that's really going to help me. What does that take you up to total? With proficiency, it would be 13. With um, I will allow you to spend a drama bomb for something interesting to happen. Sure, let's do that. Perfect. I'll spend, I right. will spend the determination, I guess, too. Okay. Uh, all right, so that is going to roll with advantage. Uh, I need you to roll damage. And what are you using? Your bow or using throwing a knife? This is a crossbow. Crossbow, okay. She's All right, what's your damage? Taking it out for a, a first swing. Okay, so that'd be a nine. Nine. All nine right. So. All right. Uh, there is a thunk as you fire your crossbow across the way. Then, then a pained whinny as you strike the flank of your horse. The horse is going to rear back in pain and uh, is going to come crashing down with a 23 uh, to hit, which is going to deal two. Uh, can you do me a favor? Can you roll 2d4? 2d4? Okay. Yeah. One sec. I'll let you do it because you caused it. Uh, that's a four and a six, or four and a two, so six. Okay, would you like to describe how this hobgoblin gets crushed by the horse you just shot as it rears up in pain? It's absolutely just going to, like, go, like, right hoof right in the forehead of the hobgoblin. Just, like, thunk. And it's going to um, fall on the pole backwards and just, like... And then maybe get stepped on a bunch. Maybe get stepped on. All right, and at that point, the horse is going to rush off into the brush in pain leaving bloody hoof prints behind it as this hobgoblin just dies. Uh, and spending the last something good happens for Anthea. Anthea, you get to act. Oh, what do you do? My goodness. Okay. Um. So there was an arrow that kind of came from, like, behind the rock? Question mark? Did that happen? Uh, you have not seen someone move from behind the rock yet. Oh. But, but nothing came from there. Nothing came from there yet, although mm. from okay. your angle, you will yeah. just be able to see the edge of one of them crouching in the bushes to the south. Oh, okay. 
Um, all right, then I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna fire a fire fire bolt at it. Okay, sounds good. Do you want to move it all yeah. to get a better vantage point around this horse? Yeah, a little bit, because the horse is kind of in the way, and I don't really want to hit it. Fair enough. Uh, oh yeah, that's perfect. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, and, and then as soon as you're done, I'm making morale checks for the horses, so... Was it... Okay. Well, maybe over here. Oh, my okay. goodness. All right, All right. So that's me rolling. Well, I'm a halfling, so that's good. Oh, God. You rolled a one <laughs> This is the perfect game ah. to be a halfling in. 16... Yeah, it really is. And this one total? is rolling so good for me, too. Yeah, 16 total. Oh, okay. Hey, look, everybody has determination. Oh, I could use my determination. Would you like to? Let's make an 18. Oh, 18 sure. is going to be a hit. Oh, wow. Sorry, I thought before we said that 16 was a hit, so I got confused. Anyway, let's 16 on bolts. the die was a hit. Oh, that's really go. Let's see, I all right, All right, let's go. All right, fire is going to lurch out of your hand. Or no, pardon me, you're throwing a potion bottle, aren't you? Absolutely. It's just like a little... It basically looks like a D20, and it's red. Yeah. Like a little, like a little, just like a little potion bottle like that. Really easily Perfect. breakable. It's only going to do five damage, but... Well, that's still enough to light this one's ass on fire. Um, yeah, it is going to let out a roar of pain, and then the others are going to join into the fray. Um, you are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You are really far away from these guys. Um, however, Sindri is not. One of them is going to rush out into the fray and turn down to Sindri and go... Oh, no. Nothing personal, kid. And if my dice stops rolling, there we go. Uh, and is going to manage to strike you with a 19. Uh, disadvantage for dodging? Oh, no. Oh, you're right. Uh, oh, God. Does a 17 hit? 17 meets it. Okay, so that's going to hit. It's nothing personnel, kid. Uh, as it pulls out his long sword and is going to slash at you for max damage. Nine points of damage as Ow. it... You try to dodge out of the way, but this is a trained warrior. This hobgoblin plants his feet and stabs into your upper chest, hitting you right next to the shoulder in that good guy spot. Nothing personnel, kid. I just need the money. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> Fuck you, buddy. Uh, the hobgoblins to the south are going to draw bow, aim at Anthea, and take two shots. Oh, no. Uh, one of them is going to go right over your head. They calculated for a normal height person. Uh, the other one, however, <laughs> is going to be a 19 to hit you, Anthea. Ooh, yeah, that, that'll hit. That sure will hit. Deep. Okay, six points of damage as Ugh. you are struck in the leg. Uh, they look. What's that? Like, I guess Good they were trying to shoot the knee of a normal person? Ah, uh, the... my knee. <laughs> But it's going to hit you in like the upper thigh hip area, and it's, it kind of ah, kind of sucks. Um, took an as that to the hip. as that happens, um, two of the horses are going to sprint off. The one near Anthea and the one behind uh, Carmilla are both going to stand firm and kind of glare at the in, at, at the encroaching hobgoblins, as if they're they are the frustrated lady. with their drink being disrupted. I mean, fair. Yeah. Uh, so, top of the initiative, Sindri, it's your turn. Um. So I'm gonna start with my uh, sword attack, uh, and that's gonna be a 21 to hit. That is absolutely a hit. Uh, so that's only gonna be five points of damage to start, uh, uh, and I'm gonna use flurry of blows. So I'm gonna use make two uh, uh, two attacks. Do it. Um. Oh, I'll use a uh, bark inspiration on uh, the one that's more likely to hit. So that'll give Perfect. me the the what was it? Mode of creation. So what does Mode of Creation do? This is the first time I've played with a College of Creation bar. attack roll, you said? Yeah. What's this for? So it, okay, it'll do an additional two points of damage. It, yeah. It basically explodes. Uh, oh, it's a Constitution saving throw against Spell Save DC. Uh, constitution save? Uh, he's is gonna get a... 15. So, uh, so that's against uh, oh, it'd be nine, wouldn't it? 
Yeah, yeah it's against your spell safe DC. Exactly. Let me grab that. So I'll also use my determination to make this one hit. So all right, sounds good. So it's it's all all out here. Um. Oh, that's better. That's eight points of damage. Oh God. Okay. So eight points of damage. Your second attack is going to. Uh, well, how do you do it? Tell me how it goes. All right. So he's got. Yeah, he gets me in the chest. I get him in the chest. Uh, yeah. And then I uh, just do the do the neck crack real quick with one hand. Just grab the head and just crack the neck. <laughs> Throw him off my sword. Ow! Oh, oh God. Ow, So the, he's, he's gonna collapse. Um, and um, what is the mode of what's the mode of creation DC? It was fourteen. It was fourteen. Okay. Eight plus proficiency plus charisma. Okay, so the body's gonna fall singed on the ground when that goes off. Um, but it didn't look like it actually did terribly much damage. Uh, Sindri, do you still have any more movement or actions? I have the option. I just, um, so that was my bonus action. Do you have and any movement that you want to use? Yeah, I do have movement. I'm just going to, oh, they're, they're bows out, but I don't well, super want to engage with them in combat by myself. Fair. So I'm going to duck down behind and take, get, get behind cover until people, other people get here as well. Sounds good. All right, Ella, it is your turn because all of the hobgoblins that rolled well on initiative were massacred. All right. I'm trying to figure out where I can see them from. I think if I go here, I can see them. Absolutely. And you can definitely see that there is trouble happening to the south uh, that shot at Anthea. Yes, so that's why I figured I would know they were there because they had shot at Anthea. Okay, you will and have line of sight on the... Fire. Just and yes, there is a little bit of brush on fire there. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. There's a smoke signal happening there yeah. that you can follow down. Um, I am going to shoot them with my light crossbow then. I think that's... Perfect. That should be within range. All right, make me an attack roll against the one on the north. Seventeen. Seventeen, eh? I'm adding uh, determination to that, by the way. Is that including the, the se that with the seventeen? Yes. Uh, you are going to fire your crossbow, and unfortunately, is going to deflect off of the hobgoblin's armor. He snarls and looks at you and goes, "You're next." Carmilla, you're up. Unless Alessandra, do you have anything else you'd like to cast, or do? No. Perfect. All right, Carmilla, you are up. Hello. Um, I have a fun little... idea for you. I do as well. Okay. I would like and to I'm remind just... you that not to not forget you have a climbing speed. Oh, that which, could also be fun. Which means that, was that you not can the plan ignore that the I rocks. Had. I can't decide. I, you know what? I'm gonna in order to get there and actually do an attack, I'm gonna have to use my action search anyway. So I think what I would like to do, if I can do this action economy as long as I'm using my action surge, is I would mm -hmm. like to hop on this horse next to me and okay. charge these guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, so hopping on the horse will be your move action. It takes half your move to get on a horse. Yep. Uh, and then the horse can take its move. You can make we we went through all of this for Dragonlance. So yeah. Uh, then the perfect. horse the horse can make a charge attack or a, or a full run. Uh, oh, the horse's speed for a riding horse is sixty feet. Okay. So basically, what'll happen is you'll hop on the horse, and you are going to let me just whoop, whoop, there we go. Uh, okay. you are I can going get to be... there with their movement. So. Yeah, and you do not even have to spend your action surge to do it. Well, then. Yeah. I'm going to say that uh... when you assume a horse, it becomes part of your movement, basically. Like, it acts on your initiative when you go, hup, hup, because otherwise, sure. it's boring. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Um, in that case, I will ride up and I will attack from the horse. Sounds good. There are two of them with bows drawn. Uh, I will attack the one 
furthest north, so the one on the left as I'm facing them. Sounds good. Um, and yeah, I will do my best. That's all we can ask, really. Oh, that's a 16 plus uh, whatever my plus is. <laughs> plus five. Uh, so 21. 21 is a hit. Roll me damage. Amazing. Um, I think I would also like to use another um, superiority die. Nice. And uh, creature can use active reaction to move up to half its speed. Um, let's see here. Uh, Elisandra, would you like to move half your speed closer as a reaction? Sure. Okay. I'll in that case, what I'll do is I'll use my maneuvering attack. Um, and so I get to add my die to my bonus or to my damage as well still. Um, but then one of my allies can use its reaction to move up to half its speed. Uh, so that damage is going to be... Uh, oh, I'm going to use my great weapon fighting because I rolled a one on my damage. Do it. Uh, and that's five plus three is eight plus two is ten. So it'll be ten damage. How do you do it? Uh, I think she's just going to barrel and kind of almost like strife past him and just decapitate him and pull a tight turn um, and face off against the next one. And since I didn't have to use my action surge, I'll use my action surge to attack this guy. Do it. <laughs> uh, that is a 20. Natural? Uh, no. Dirty. Okay. That's still gonna hit. Uh, Roll me damage. Unnatural. Cool. And for funsies, let's use my other attack, and just in case it doesn't die... Actually, this one, just so I use all of them, I'm gonna use a pushing attack. <laughs> oh, god. Okay. Uh, Do I have to make a save on that? A, uh, yes. You can make a strength save. Ooh, actually. Uh, that's a 18. Uh, that will definitely make it, yeah. Okay. Um, but it is going to take 13, 16 damage. Okay, well, uh, you do not... Not you know, that bad, in, <laughs> in spite of everything, you don't manage to push him over. He holds firm the last hobgoblin here as he goes, You may kill me, but you'll never take our honor. And uh, you will, in fact, kill him and maybe even take his honor. Uh, how do you do it? Uh... I think she he'll he'll say this, um, and uh, she'll say, "You've already done that yourself," and just skewer him sort of straight, <gasps> like sort of flip the sword around so it's holding it downwards, and just stab it straight down at him. Blood will usher out of his mouth, and he will collapse to the ground, dead. And with that, we are out of combat. You can hear the sound of the birds returning around you and the sound of your horses, one of which is running away very fast and the others which are kind of looking around and going Can I, since I'm on a horse, oh, can I dear. bolt for the other one? You can. There are so there are three horses that have ran away. Do you want to go mm. to the one that is running away the most fearfully? The wounded one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, you can absolutely do so. Uh, your horse is not wounded, so please do me a favor and as you ride up beside it, riding to the northeast of this this pond, uh, make me an animal handling roll. Okay. Blood is dripping down the horse's flank. That front. is a nat 20. That is a nat 20. Uh, the horse looks up at you with, with eyes wide with fear. What do you do to calm it? Uh, I think... At first, she's a little, like, hesitant to do this because, like, her gut instinct is, like, to protect the thing that's hurt, but is also like, ooh, I'm kind of scary and a lot of animals are unnerved by me. Um, so I think at first she doesn't try to get close to it. She just manages, she rides the horse, uh, bolts past the other one and kind of blocks it with the other horse, um, but then sort of slowly hops down and just just sh 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 as uh, she walks up to it until it kind of breathes a little better. 
the horse will immediately calm down. And I want you to do me a favor and make me... Uh, please roll me your wisdom. That's an 11. An 11. You are going to reach out and touch the horse, and it is going to lean and nozzle into your hand. It is pained, and it seeks the comfort of a human touch. As you touch it, though, and as you, you calm it, a flash of memory rips through you. Your uncle, standing in front of the kennels of dogs, baying and barking at you as you pass, your uncle turns and looks at the kennels there in the courtyard of your castle, was it? He snarls down. Quiet! Obey! And the dogs stop barking and yowling, his hand held wide above them. See, my child. The power to master beasts lies within our blood. All you must do is show them who the real beast is. The horse breathes hot breath onto your wrist. Well, we, we can... We can be beasts together, but no one has to be in charge, yes. And we'll just sort of gently <laughs> stroke its nose. It will hobble back toward camp. Quite a sizable crossbow bolt jutting out of its massive flank. Meanwhile, back at the, back at the pond, is anybody going after the other two horses? Yeah, I think so. Sounds good. Uh, looking at this, you have the ones who bolted were um, Lady and Rain both bolted. Uh, mm -hmm. And the one that was shot was Penelope. Okay. Um, I think Ella would like to try and mimic things she probably heard like the stable hands use and whatnot of like a particular like whistle for calling in the horses type thing and see if okay. something like that will help. Give me an animal handling check. Uh, that is an 18. 18. All right. So you're going to do the whole like. And one of the horses is going to peer out. Lady is going to peer out behind one of these like massive cherry blossom trees that are glowing, growing along here, and is going to kind of give you a suspicious look. I think she'll click to her and try and call her by name. Then she'll clop over happily and start nuzzling around your armpits and waist looking for a bag of snacks. I will probably rummage through whatever saddlebag there is, which are not mine, and pull out some rations or the horse's feed type thing. As you are um, reaching sure each in of them there, is carrying that. the horse is going to like fluck its head to the side toward the other side of, of its bags, where you know for a fact there are sugar cubes. I will pull one out. The horse and looks smug, which is weird meantime, because it doesn't have the muscles for it, but it does. Like, I'll think, like, kind of just pull out two sugar cubes, have one free and one tucked into a pocket, and then pull out some of their, ra their rations and, which is probably like oats or something, some form of grain, and then uh, whatever bucket is used for it. And hoping it's kind of like a metal one or something, but put put a bit in and shake it to try and call the other horse. Perfect. All right. So, um, while you're doing that, is anybody else going after the last horse? Going after Rain? 
No, I wasn't planning on it. I'm very. Perfect. I'm, yeah, I'm not. Is very anybody bad. looking I at the bodies? I think Lyric will go after the other horse then. Okay, so Lyric chasing after the other horse. Uh, please make me uh, a. Um, so you are able to track it down. It hasn't gone terribly far away. Uh, make me a animal handling roll to try to convince oh, it to God. come back. Oh God, I was so close. This is still not great. This is a this is a whole eight. Can Lyric have advantage considering I just shook a bucket full of feed? Just yeah, like try that. and call this other one back. Yeah, help action. Good. I think that's very valid. Oh my god, that's that's not better. That's that's a five. So the eight was actually better. Oh my god. Okay. And uh, I said I used my. Did I use my determination in my when I not. shot? I did not. Okay. Okay. It has been rebought for you. If so, do you want to use it? Will it make it? Will a ten be enough here to get this horse? Uh, I rolled to see how panicked the horse was, and I rolled a two out of twenty, so it's pretty chill. In that case, uh, yeah, I will use it for that. Well, you used it the moment it. you asked, so. <laughs> so yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like, yes, perfect. I, I will use it. Um, the horse is going to kind of side eye you and walk up. And can you make me a strength save? Oh God. Um... Well, apparently that one I can kind of do. A strength save mm -hmm. is a dirty 20. Perfect. It's going okay. to shoulder check you as it walks by, going... <laughs> and start heading back toward the water. Right, then. Uh, is anybody checking the hobgoblins? Yeah. <laughs> Sindri and Anthea. Let's so go. <laughs> the two of you are going to see the corpses of what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I think there were seven hobgoblins in this fight. Maybe, I, maybe I'm counting wrong. Six. six or seven. It was six. Uh, yeah. So six mm -hmm. hobgoblins lying on the ground. Each uh, is dressed in a suit of surprisingly well-crafted chainmail. Each carries a large shield with kind of a um, a V-shaped notch taken out of the bottom so that it's kind of bladed. Ooh. A nice little jagged edge like a pair of fangs jutting out the bottom of it. And um, each is brandishing a slightly serrated, slightly curved longsword. As you're checking the bodies, they don't have terribly much on them. A total of about 10 pieces of gold that you're able to, to rummage together between them. However, in one of them, uh, you are going to both find a crudely drawn sketch of Lyric. Wow. Huh. With the words... How random. 25 pieces for this one. And a picture of a spider scrawled beneath it. Oh, I see. Not random at all. Sindri will uh, put an extra zero on the bottom of that. Uh, <laughs> just be like, oh, yeah, good call. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, rude. Um, Sindri will give the goblin a little, like, tone edge. Uh, also, uh, this is a little concerning. What? The lyrics got a bounty on their head? Yeah, specifically that. Yeah, specifically, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess Gla maybe Glassstaff or who? That would be pretty quick. That would be. I mean, we I took the extra know. day, I guess. Like, if he got on a horse and rode. Hmm, that's true. And we also don't know where Cragma Castle is. No, that's true. It could be very close. That's. The Sindri will almost correct himself to keep and then can keep it to himself. <laughs> but, uh, well, wait, I guess we'll, we'll tell everyone when they get back, hey? Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll show everyone everything we've collected. Yeah. Question for Kelly. Yes. Um, when that first hobgoblin attacked Alessandra, it said mm. something to her about spider or something along those lines. Christine nice didn't price. catch it because Christine was trying to catch up with everything. Basically said, you'll fetch a nice price for the spider. Okay, thank you. All 
Alright. The rest of you are all going to be able to reassemble there at the pond. Do you show them these things, or just keep them to yourselves? Uh, well, no, we'll show them everything. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so, Lyric, they didn't quite get it right, um, but apparently uh, someone wants you. Dad, we I fixed assume. it for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you pissed someone off, specifically. Not the drawing. I couldn't fix the drawing. That's not my skill set. Just me? Mm -hmm. uh, just, we just found one wanted poster. But uh, the other, there's one of them yelling something about Lady Alessandra for the spider, so. Uh, and there I is one there's... that, like, was pretty badly burned, I will remind as well. Oh, right. <laughs> Looks over at the pile of ashes. Uh, anyways. Uh... That's more than a little concerning. Yeah, it's very concerning. I guess we'll have to stop the spider ourselves. Clearly. Um. I don't think we can do it. May, may may I? Yeah. She'll put a hand out to take a look at the at the bounty. The so you'll pass it over. Who it looks be like able to get that so far ahead of us. Well, not far, far, but why? Magic. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that is an, always an option that I forget about. Mm-hmm. And what? we did. Magic. Yeah, and Glassstaff did get a, a good look at us before we. Uh before he escaped. So he could have passed along a description or drawn them. Mm. Hey, I imagine he would have... He had more money than that. He would not for 25 gold. That's just insulting. Maybe yeah, that's the even point. like all the parts of a, of a tiefling body are definitely worth more than 25 gold. Why would you know that? Oh, I mean, I'm just making an estimate. But Do, do you frequently check the price of body parts for various creatures? Well, uh, no, but, but thinking about different reagents, they must be. I have reagents that I... are way more than 25 gold. Please never use any of m my parts as reagents. Oh, I won't without Please. asking. That's very kind of you, Anthea. Uh, mm -hmm. It's only polite, really. Anyway, um, well, somebody can't respond. Uh, it depends. Then don't. Anyway, we should probably keep going. She's gonna start trotting off to where Lady is. Oh, you're back. <laughs> Sindri will look out lyric like, uh, you okay? Sandra's gonna lean in no. and also ask it. Is that normal that people use other people as no. reagents? No! Generally sure it, not. Is it just maybe a city thing? No! no. It's very <laughs> much not a city thing! This is a, well, this is, it's a very strange thing! Well, I've always heard that like cities are hives of scum and villainy. Uh, We're in the middle of the woods, though! <laughs> well, yes, but she's from yes, a city. Yes, they, they uh, are, oh. but I don't see... Anthea being the type to be involved in that and survive it. I don't know. She checks a mean fireball. Things. True. Also, does She's body slide? Cutting out, cutting out body parts. <laughs> does uh, body snatching pay? I would imagine so. Otherwise, why would you do it? Um, Anthea? Oh, yes. Does body snatching pay money in Neverwinter? Uh, I'd imagine so. No? I don't okay. know. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll turn to Lyric. Okay, encouraging answer. And then <laughs> Sindri will hop, walk Are over there. Are we to... going? We should be heading out. Um, can someone tend to the horse injury? Yeah, well, Carmel will walk back up. But yes, oh. can someone help? Persephone? Persephone, yes. Persephone. I can try. Uh, I, Alessandra will offer to as well use uh, 
lay on hands. All right. Um, she or healing is... hands. Healing hands. ASMR That's... ability, I think. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so she is down eight hit points. Okay. Um, I can roll a number of d4s equal to my proficiency bonus. Perfect. Yeah, go ahead. So that would be 2d4. That will be six hit points back. All right. You are able to take out the... Um... You were able to take out the bolt without much issue. Um, however, there will be uh, a little bit of blood, and she will um, she will require Carmilla stay there and keep her calm. I will offer but her a sugar cube afterwards. Seems like as long as Carmilla's there, she's okay with this. She gets something sweet after dealing with it. Okay. Or do we have time to take a quick, a uh, quick short rest after this while we're like? Getting, gathering our stuff and healing the horses and. I think you could, yeah. Could I? I will spend some of my uh, uh, short or my hit dice to get some healing back. Sounds and good. Should, if we are planning on sitting for a bit and recuperating, sort of just taking a breather, Lyric will happily do song of rest because I'm pretty sure I can do that whenever we rest. This is true. All right, I'm back. I'm back up with one. So, thank you. Okay. Does the horse heal its last two hit points? The horse will take a short rest too. Why not? <laughs> sure. A horse rest, if, if you will. If you take Eating time bandaging the horse, or... sure. Hold on, hold on. It's a pony rest. Because it's, it's a... short. Yes. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> so Song of Rest adds a d6, yeah? No. Yeah. yeah? We'll say that nice. the horse can yes. spend it. Yeah, yes. it does. It, at uh, oh, at Lyric's level, it does. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So taking a few minutes to rest and bandage up the horse... You have time to get yourselves back in order. Do you head back on the road after the rest, or do you want to hang out for a bit still? I think Lyric's eager to get moving. Okay. Now, I guess here's the important question. You'll be able to reach Thunder Tree. You could theoretically reach it tonight, but then you'd be going, you'd be going in in the dark. Or you could make it so that you can stop midway through and arrive early in the morning basically pack up and head out for just around like early morning say like be there at first light or a little bit after what would you prefer to do my vote is for the, it getting there in the morning i, I feel agree. like getting there in the dark seems like an invitation for trouble also I don't think that I would be very happy if someone knocked on my door and demanded answers in the middle of the night. I think you can make me think of one. I would not be averse to camping and resting before tackling something that may be potentially um, a dangerous situation. So we're coming here to check on something, correct? You are. So something Could might be wrong. Yeah, we had the druid we were looking for, and there also was the alchemist hut, if I remember correctly. I don't think it was alchemist. Or but their... yeah, the store? Yes. Yeah. Pardon me, it was 75 miles to Neverwinter, not 50. Um, and then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 miles to Thunder Tree from there along the main roads. So 100 miles total, the way that you're doing it right there. Uh, but that means that if you keep riding through, you've been riding most of the day, and you could either camp, or if you wanted to deal with going through the front gates and the guards and all of that, you could go back to Neverwinter and camp there and pay a lot more money. Rather just go go grab a spot in the woods on the road to Thunder Tree. I thought of the cheaper option. I uh, also I don't want to if there's bounties out for us, I don't want to be around that many people. Shucks. <laughs> it sounds like an adventure. Like camping? Uh-huh. 
I suppose so. I mean, aside Sorry, from that time outside you. the goblin cave, I've never really camped before. Oh. Yes, I Neither has Sindri, I guess, really. Yeah. wonder if we'll see that wolf again. Oh, they were so nice. Hmm. That was really? real, huh? Yeah, real, real wolf. It was real. It was really real. So I guess we start making our way, uh, continuing our way. You start making your way back north. The trip is long, and by the end of the day, your asses are completely sore and numb. You set up a camp in a little wooded outcrop along the road between Neverwinter and Thunder Tree. The fire is easy enough to light between Lyric and Thea and anybody who actually has survival. The brush goes up easily. And you all find yourselves around a campfire. Your horses lying down or leaning against trees in the corner, either munching idly or napping. The fire flickers, throwing embers into the night sky, and you can hear the sound you can hear the sound of crickets and other insects. And occasionally the call of a bat. And then slightly fewer crickets. In the distance, a wolf howls. Far away from here. Your tents are set up, and things are comfortable. And I would like Lady Alessandra, in particular, to do me a favor and make me a perception roll. And tell me what you got. Uh, that is going to be a 16. There are more stars out here above the forest than you have ever seen. What are you all talking about? What are you all looking at? What are you all doing? I think Alessandra's just going to lean back and kind of shield her eyes from the firelight and just look at the stars. She'll get very excited if she sees a shooting star. Cindy will uh, encourage uh, Lyric to play some play some music if if possible. Try and just like. Would you mind playing something? Oh, not at all. I could do that. Yeah. Yeah, she'll play. Uh, Sindri's very pleased. You're you're so good. It's been it's always nice to have you have you with us. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> it was always nice to have you on the ship too. It's uh feels familiar. Hmm. That's true. <sighs> Do you miss Candlekeep? Um, not exactly. I'm so, sort of. It was nice, but uh, I, I did leave for a reason. Of course. <laughs> Though I, less the place and more the reason I went in the first place. You know, get an education, all that. How do you find it compares to this? Hmm. I don't know. This is a lot more... There's more on the line. But it also feels less like it's about our personal goals. At least for me. What about you? It feels more real. There's always an adventure to be had, but never one that we got to choose. It was always kind of one that was thrust upon us. This is the endless choice, and we get to make our own fates, and 
choose our own friends. You don't have 19 of Waterdeep's finest best friends assigned to you when you sign up for work. <laughs> and so you look around, you'll, you find f four people and those people become your friends. Hmm. And I'd, I'd like to th say we're friends at this point. Uh, Cedric will have a swig from his wineskin and pass it down. Here, go take it, take a sip, and we'll pass it along. I think Anthea's next to her nearby. Anthea will have to be nudged. She is she will uh, nudge tinkering. Anthea. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes? Yeah. Oh, what's this? Wine? Wine. Oh. Wine. Uh, okay. If, sure. If, and then. She'll just take a sweep. Pass it around and all. Pass it. Okay. Um, and then uh, Lyric will go back to playing. <laughs> oh, it's not... thank you. It's fine. Tinker, tinker, tinker. It's not Neverwinter's finest, but it's not Neverwinter's worst. Neverwinter's worst is a sausage. <laughs> Carmilla throws the wine sack at you. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Oh, I'm sorry. I should not resist. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ella suddenly looks down from where she's been looking at the sky as a wineskin goes whizzing. <laughs> terrible puns. The worst part of learning common is hearing all of these stupid puns. That was so, hilarious. That's a pretty will, good one. Sindri will happily like bet, like babble back in Elvin that there's plenty of plenty of terrible puns in Elvish too. They just don't have the same ring to them. There is something about common that just encourages them, and I don't know why. It's getting a table full of groans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the elven ones just bother my family. Ella just looks confused still. <laughs> Probably for the better, honestly. And, and Tia, what are you tinkering now? Is it the the wheels? Or no, the seat? no, we don't have any of those, so I don't really care about that right now. I'll do that when we have <laughs> another one. Anyway, I'm making a little, um, mm, a pet, if you will. A little servant thing, guy, thing. And this is the heart. She'll show up the, show off the <laughs> rock. And I'm just trying to figure out how to make it go. Anyway, it's not done yet. She's gonna try to, like, cover it with her body really ineffectually. I, sorry, what is it? And trying to look around. <laughs> it's, um, not done. It's a little servant guy. Pet. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it will be wonderful. You, you make many strange and incredible objects. Oh, thank you. I'm just, I'm not very, um, effective in battle all by myself, so I think this will help. Oh. So, yes, it does seem to be becoming much more common in our daily lives, so perhaps that is a good idea. Normally I would say it, it is not as important, but it's been kind of important lately, and you have mm -hmm. been getting hurt a lot. I have. And I just, I just think it's going to become even more important, it seems, if we are always camping out like this and going from place to place. And the people asked us to do a whole bunch of stuff already, so I mean, I guess we're going to do that too. So yeah, I think I need a little bit of help, and I think this thing will be able to help. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. It's not done yet. Out of curiosity, um, how many... How, in your general question out here for all of you, in your day-to-day -day life, how, how often do you get shot by arrows and bolts and such, or stabbed or attacked, just on the regular? Because I feel that I've been attacked more times in this last week, or... Hold on, 
it's been, in, than I ever have in all of my years. Ever. I mean, it all come, I guess it all comes from leaving the lab, because I never got attacked before this, but then I left the lab one day, and a poof, it all happened. Hmm. My my family believes very greatly in, uh, I believe it's called corporal punishment, and oh. it has still been much worse here than it was there. That is concerning. Are you, are you all right? Do you need someone to talk to? Oh goodness. Uh, well, probably best to just keep that all bottled up. I think. Sindri will retrieve the wine skin, and uh, <laughs> still some in there, and hand over and sit down. I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask that question to, Lyric. I got in too many of my shares of scraps. Hmm. I mean, there was a time we got attacked by pirates, but that was. Still not very as common. It's not on no. land. But I spent some time down in Baldur's Gate and Waterdeep and Neverwinter occasionally. I yeah. mm. I took a little too much pleasure in uh, prize fighting. So not everyone plays fair. What's that? It paid pretty well for a minute, not. But here's the thing: the the money we're making here is more money than I've seen in. Well, I've ever owned or held. And I. Yeah. It's not why I'm why I'm doing this. I'm still out here for my friend, but can't say it hurts. I mean, Anthea, if we do all these tasks, people ask of us. That shop of yours is going to be, like, not much anyone else has seen. Oh, yeah. No, I, I know we're planning on it, but that's why just why I need a little bit of help. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a terrible thing. It's just a, a fact of my life right now, I suppose. But anyway, it's going to be pretty. I can't wait to see it. Thanks. It's going to take a lot of work, though, so I'm just going to be over here. She's going to turn around and oh, kind of have a listen. <laughs> uh, Sindri will take that as his cue. Uh, I guess we'll set uh, set watches for this evening. Sounds like a good idea. Um, I'll take I'll take the middle one, I guess. Uh, I can take the middle one if you'd like. Okay. I'd do better in the dark. I can, I can take go. first if you want. Lyric? I think I'll be awake for a while yet. So, do you mind some company? Oh, Sandra. Do you know anything yeah, can... about the stars? Um, somewhat. I don't really recognize any of them. I never really learned yeah. to see the constellations. Lyric will try and recall what she can from what she uh, may have learned in Candlekeep. And this is the... There's so many more than I'm used to seeing. <laughs> it's quite crowded. Do you want to make me an arcana roll or a history roll? Your call. Let's do arcana. Yeah. On the... I love this. My I've got the background researcher like feature. Oh, nice. But that's only helpful for knowing if you can't remember a piece of information, you know where and from or from whom you can obtain it for the most part. <laughs> if you don't know, you can probably ask Sindri, the sailor. <laughs> yeah. Alternatively, if she can't remember, she's like, I think I know which book exactly it was in and I just can't. But. Okay. So I said I was going to do Arcana. So that is... That's a 12. Well, that's enough to know some basic mm -hmm. details. Yeah. Okay. She'll point out some of like the major constellations, like like the uh, being able to look up at the sky and be like, oh yeah, so like that's a, that's like 
Cassiopeia. That's the Big oh, Dipper. No. I think that's, that's like no, that's no, no. Check, check, chat. No, but like it's very cool. This is an example. I, I, I'm actually gonna check it, but do it. Okay. Yeah, that's true. What what season are we in? Um, I believe I said that was it autumn, or was it spring? I don't remember. I feel like it's autumn. There's crunching leaves. So, and if I said anything different okay. before, then just you've been there for months and didn't notice. Okay. Okay. I think it was. So, I think it was like September-ish. Okay. I tend to start these modules when they're set, hmm. or I tend to set them when they start, except for okay. Dragonlance. So, um, well, see, see that one up up there. That, well, if you if you connect those, it's that one's the hop. And um, that that one over there. That's um, um. Oh, the Lady of Mystery. I almost forget if it's a lady or like the. Hmm. And, and I think that one's supposed to be Mr. Star Circle, I think. You can hear the sound of breaking branches in the distance. Are you still playing your instrument as you're talking about this, or did you stop for a bit? Oh, uh, she might have paused for a moment, but she was sort of just like playing it quietly because it's just like a. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, with that, can Ella move to the edge of camp and try and, like, hide? Sure. A little, just to see, try and spot what this is without it spotting her? Absolutely. So, moving to the edge of camp. Your horses are at the north. And you're along a trail over just a little bit a ways to your west. Where do you want to move? Um. So you're on a slight embankment, so you are out of view of most of the riders on the road. Okay. Um, but it sounds like it's coming from the woods. It sounds like it's coming from the west, actually, heading along the trail. And can I get a perception okay. roll off anybody who's pausing to look? I think Ella will move up beside by the tree. Uh, that is an 18 for perception. 18 for perception. You will smell something that smells musty before anything else. And then you are going to hear that those cracking noises are even deeper than you'd expected. There's a slight rumble in the ground as something very large pushes through the brush. And you are going to hear the sound of a tree trunk smashing to the ground. A small, about probably Getting a, very close a or a ways away? Kind of wandering your direction. Lyric, you're still playing music, you said, right? Ella's going to come walk back and start waving and put out the fire. Okay. Oh. Okay. The Shh. fire douses. What? Can you not hear that? It's not like a tree collapse. There's something huge moving this way. Was Carmilla sleeping or? Yeah, Sindri will walk over and gently wake her up. What? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that, was it? Grab, I think that your... was Carmilla. No. 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 Grab your sword. There's maybe something here. Anybody who's looking down into the dark there can make me a perception roll. Um, Christine, can you make me your perception? Oh, wait, you have dark vision. You're an ASMR. I keep thinking you're a human for some reason. Um, so if you are kind of hiding and watching, can you make me a stealth check? Now, I need to know, are you wearing your armor? Because you were getting ready for bed, so you might not have disadvantage. Well, I think I, since I was staying on watch, mm, fair. I would still have it on. Okay, so you'll have disadvantage on this. 
Uh, so that is going to be ooh, 14. Okay. What's everyone else doing? I think Are you heading Lyric over where is going to try of... and try and be stealthy and kind of shift towards maybe not the same place, but like if there's other trees along that embankment. There are. There are some to the north, kind of over by where the horses are are tethered. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go sort of to the south west. Okay. Make Maybe me a perception roll. Okay. There's something large moving on the edge of your dark vision. Alessandra, you can okay. see it as well. It begins ambling over toward the road, rooting in the ground. Well, that is a 19. Oh, wait, no. 19? 20. I always forget about the jack of all trades. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, over Sindri and Carmilla, Carmilla, you were awakened. And what is Anthea doing? I think she's going to take last watch, so she was probably still sleeping. But if there's commotion, she'll probably wake up. Okay. And what's going on? If, if Anthea is asleep, then, then Carmilla will go wake her up. Anthea, Anthea, what? What? Shh, what? something, oh. there's something out there. Oh. There's sound or heard something. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. <gasps> okay. As you start Let's to go. stumble out of your tent, Alessandra and Lyric, as you are looking over the precipice of this escarpment, you will see, crashing through the edge of the wood, an immense owl bear. It lets off a slightly angry trill. Like, I can't do it, but you guys know what an owl bear sounds like. It sounds ridiculous for what it is. It lets off this high pitched call into the darkness and then begins to amble slowly south, sniffing the air. So cute. <gasps> I think Lyric's like almost like bouncing, just like, oh my god, it's so cute. <laughs> it starts heading south. It snuffs over toward your direction. Now this thing is the size of a full-grown grizzly bear, long gray feathers trilling down its sides and flanks, its face like that of a barn owl, with a long cruel beak that could strip the meat off the bones of a soldier in plate mail. It's so cute. Does Alessandro know anything about these? You can make me a nature roll. Yes, please. Can I also do that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the rest of you can see your friends hiding on the edge. What do you uh, want to do? Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Uh, owl bears are carnivorous beasts. They are monstrosities. They are incredibly strong. They have a lot of health. They are very keen of sight and smell and are known for, for basically being very ill-tempered. So not something we really want to fight. You could probably take it, but it would be quite a fight. Okay, they would well, shred you pretty good. They are mostly carnivores, um, so the smell of meat and sound probably attracts them. I was going to hope that uh, the horses don't notice and freak out. That's a fifth. I got a 15 to nature. Okay, so you'll know most of that. Uh, you'll know they're very, very, um, they're very perceptive and they're very ornery. You'll basically so know cute. about them about as much as you know about grizzly bears in real life. Okay. Yeah, and there's probably a bunch of fairy tales about them too. Oh, totally. Yeah, there's the prince and the owl bear, the owl bear and the pauper. <laughs> Alessandra's gonna watch it very carefully, and if it looks like it notices them and starts coming, she's gonna shriek "owl bear" <laughs> type thing um, and get ready to attack. And I think to give you a warning at least, so hopefully they won't be caught surprised with it suddenly arriving. Fair. I'm just gonna cast minor illusion in. Uh, the direction away from them 
like to further to the west across the path okay. to make a sound that is more like something that the owl bear might go after, like rabbits or. Sounds something. good. Go ahead and make me a deception or animal handling roll. Your your choice, mm-hmm. and um, I will give you advantage on this because this thing has keen ears, so it would notice it twice as well as a normal human would. So I just do it. It's just against my spell save DC. Okay. All right. I can't believe that's how that so you will create the sound of a running rabbit across the way as the owlbear begins to amble toward your camp, and it will pause and turn the other direction. Sniff the air and let out that yelping call again, that into the brush to the west. And you will see two smaller owl bears amble out of the brush. One of them is going to trip over its feet, do a somersault inadvertently, and end up on its butt looking around with confusion. The other one is going to knock it over and rush up to its mother. The larger owl bear is going to gesture with its beak toward the southwest, and the smaller one is going to rush off after whatever animal it just heard there. It lets out a satisfied (coughs) over from the brush, and the other one will pick itself up, shake itself off, and charge into the undergrowth as well. The larger owlbear will look over at your camp, and you have to imagine that it notices you. But then hearing another from the underbrush, it lets out a frustrated sigh that is the sound of a parent It wants to go over there and cause trouble with you. It wants to eat you. (sighs) But the kids. And the owlbear will wander off to check on the noise that Lyra created. Good work, Lyric. The rest of the night passes without incident, and you all get a full night's rest, waking up in the morning. You will see that at the tree, just beneath the escarpment, are a couple of small wrens in it from massive claws, almost as if something came and left a calling card in the middle of the night for you to find in the morning. Well, it's time for us to go. I feel like the woods have made it very apparent that they don't want us to stick around. Yeah, it does appear we've overstayed our welcome. Yep, time to go. With that, you saddle up your horses, and I think this is a perfect time for us to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere, folks.
everybody. Welcome back. This is the part of the program where we talk to you, the chat. It is good to see you there. Col Colonna Curd. Really? Did you name yourself after Curd? Curd oh, in wait. Kelowna, you poor thing. That he died and went to Kelowna. He got isekai I mean... to Kelowna. You got isekai if you die and if you die in the Sword Coast, you get isekai. You actually did. Oh my god, Kelowna Curd, you are you are oh a god. hero. I'm hero. Gonna, hold on. Oh my god. That's yeah. Hold on. Before you go to bed, hold on. <laughs> What's wrong about Kelowna? There you go. I've made time. you a VIP. I've made you a VIP for naming your <laughs> your Twitch account after something in one of our games. So please don't turn out to be an awful person. <laughs> this is our, the first time you've chatted. You've said two lines and you're already a VIP. That's a record. I will knock you down to Goblin so fast it'll make your head spin. No, not another one. All right. Gaius. Oh, I hope everybody's having a good time tonight. I who wanted to murder the Albert to take its cubs? That's I the am, way. I am so afraid of owl bears. Owl bears will mess you up. They have they're five the, pointy ends. Yeah. They have they maybe more. <laughs> What's the other Maybe pointy end? So cute. What's the other uh, pointy end? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um so uh, in our homebrew games, damn it, you can you can shape shift into an owlbear if you're a druid. That because that's the law. That's the Duly law. Duly noted for Tia. Tia can shape shift into an owlbear just because it'll piss people off who like wave the book at me. Yeah, well, no, that's it is a monstrosity. Sure. You can't do it. I'm like, if the D and D movie can do it and Baldur's Gate can do it, I can do it. I'm so mm -hmm. bummed that I played a druid well before this decision was made. <laughs> Yeah, Callie so would have made an excellent Albert. Bring her back for the, one Was it the D and D movie? It was in the current D and D movie, like the new one. No, I, I know that, but is that why Baldur's Gate did it? Maybe, but you know what? I'm okay with it. Like that, there is something great. Like I just finished Act Two. No spoilers, but the final boss of Act Two, I I I killed with an Albert slap. Oh, good. That's wonderful. It's like, I am the avatar of destruction, bad guy thingy. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, woof. That is great. Because Halson, Halson's great. Halson's great. He's the, fantastic. There's a, the best meme I've ever seen for Baldur's Gate is the, the writers. It's about like the writers of Baldur's Gate put the the greatest collection of sad boys and girls in a party and here is the most emotionally stable man in the sword coast <laughs> as a bonus there's he's just like one emotion there's gonna be one he's gonna he, he is he has all of the emotional stability of the entire rest of the cast rolled up in him it's ridiculous he's just like would you like to romance me i'm already romancing another i mean that's fine if it's okay with them and you it's okay with me like i don't care whatever's good <laughs> You know, we're all respecting adults here. <laughs> it's just like, what? Do you, are you into furry play? I can be an owlbear. What the? F or a bear bear. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, folks, uh, anything we want to talk about during this chat break? Some cool stuff coming up. Um, you should consider joining the Patreon because I am running a very special episode of Strixhaven in December. Because uh, Krista's taking a Strixhaven off. Yeah, Christy, you get a break. You can you should come and watch though, because it'll be fun. Um, I am running a module that I found on DMs Guild called the Pub That Crawls. It is a mystical pub a pub crawl uh, where you have to uh, drink special drinks at six establishments, ending in a Baba Yaga pub crawl, pub hut. It's gonna be so good. Um, and then I also want people to join the Patreon because at 175 patrons, there is a very solid chance. I've heard a rumor that Christine will run a game for the Patreon. A, a, a short little adventure that I am really excited to get my costume for. Because my name is amazing for that. and I can't say it, but I can type it. I'm... Has the cast for the, Strix, the Strixhaven one shot been announced? Uh, it has not, but I think Chris is playing in that. <gasps> I gasped. 
So yeah, it's going to be, I, I don't mind announcing it. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be Chris, Christine, um, Cal and, uh, Jen. So, yeah. it, and yeah. then Bryn. Awesome group. Yeah. Pub crawl, pub crawl, pub crawl. <laughs> There's gonna be so much There's wild. Be magic. every. I don't know. I don't know if you two have watched. I know Christine has watched some, but I don't know if Chris, if you've watched any Strixhaven. Just know that it's rated R for Arlen, which is oh. Bryn's character. Okay, and she's your chaperone. Uh, so I like super love that magic setting. Like I've like played a bunch of that that set when I was in standard. Like I've built yeah. decks around their cards, so I'm like. Oh, sweet Strix, Strixhaven! So I'm like digging around in the in the book like a little squirrel, and I'm very much enjoying that. Just be prepared; it's it's Strixhaven does Gossip Girl. Yes, yeah, it's, yes. It's, it's, it's a CW show. It's a it's CW. A, show. I am 100%. fully planning to play some combination variation of all of my characters, like Luna and Callie, and <laughs> amazing. Uh, so it should be good. This gonna is, be, this it's is gonna very be really good. good. Um, <laughs> other stuff that's coming up that you should know about. Uh, for the Patreon, Alien is dropping next month. Um, what else is up? Uh, well, also on uh, December 16th, I think it is. 16th. We have another what? Extra Life coming. So if you, if you missed Extra Life, there are four more Extra Life games that are coming next month. Uh, it is going to be... Uh, I'm going to run a little dungeon crawl that I'm not going to tell you anything about, but bring your wallets. It's going to be great. Uh, and then uh, I am going to be playing in a couple of other games. There is going to be a game of Brindlewood Bay. Uh, there is going to be a game of maybe Christian Horse Girl Camp. I don't know what Jen's deciding. Jen's running something. And then we're going to be finishing up with, uh, with, the, with the end of the Blood Boat is going to finally happen. Yes, Robin. The the blooped boater, as Robin just typed, because... Are you drunk? A verb. <laughs> blooped boater. That sounds like. No, that's exactly boat. how it's spelled. I don't know what you're talking the, about, Kelly. The blooped boater. Oh, I didn't realize it was a Scandinavian game. It's a Nordic lark, yeah. right? Oh yeah. boy. Oh boy. Let's uh, let's not talk about what's happening in the vampire fandom right now. Um, oh, you remind me of that. Yeah. Um, so uh, other fun things that are happening very soon uh this week folks tomorrow is uh the shards of nern again and we are delving actually they got to fight their way into the ruins of Casadad, so you definitely want to show up for that uh as we rush toward the season finale which is going to be a big one i guarantee it is uh and then wednesday is what is likely the final episode of dragonlance shadow of the dragon queen so you should definitely come out and uh, and enjoy that. And it's going to be great. There's going to be many tears will be shed and uh, it should be a lot of fun. And then Thursday I'm off and Friday I'm off. And then Saturday is the season finale of uh, of Mage the Ascension of the Victorian Age, which is which just came back just in time to wrap. So, you know, that's pretty good. And there's more Planescape on yeah. Sunday. I do have to apologize, though. I When I was doing Planescape, I did Mort's voice right for the first, like, two sentences. And then I went I, I went really deep and turned him into, like, like, a teamster. So I feel bad about that. Someone commented about that. They're like, ah, the voice is kind of off. Uh, it's because Mort's supposed to sound like this. He's a very nasally voice because he doesn't have anything, you know, but, but, his, but his skull. And I kind of turned him into one of these guys because that's just a little more comfortable for my voice. One you know? of these guys. One funny. of these guys. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I played with your blood boat guy. I can't wait. I can't wait to play play that character. I can't wait to play Elder... Uh, Elder... My Elder character again. I forget what his name is. <laughs> calling? I, Elder Calling! That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Elder Calling in the pouring rain. <laughs> Oh, blood. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have any I cool? Would, oh, I ahead. would say something about Shania, but I literally cannot do the same voice without the fangs in. You put your fingers like in, the you're way. High no, it's not line. the same. It's not the same. Okay, because there's a very specific way how you talk around them, which makes it. And I, I was trying it. It's just not. It's, it's not. I can't. I Are need you ready to have for the, a all the fangs Amy? in. Yeah, although I keep forgetting to actually paint something that so that's fair. Maybe I'll try to I, get this weekend. I am super excited because the next chapter has one of the best titles of a chapter they've ever published. 
Yeah. Do we get to philosophers? Know? No, I'll just tell you right now. Philosophers with mm. clubs. <laughs> like, wow. What does that even mean? It's so. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your support, folks. Uh, please visit the. Oh no. Subscribe. Hmm. Uh, this weekend, if you aren't busy watching Planescape and Mage, uh, hmm. if you're in the Philadelphia area, you should come to PAX Unplugged. There's still tickets available, and I'm going to be there, along what? with a bunch of people from Blackwater D&D. So there's a bunch nice. of us cool West Coasters going to be out there. Go have fun. Say hi. Go rep us. I'll do what I can. <laughs> Damn straight. Do it. Rep I will hopefully have some. I have Do stickers. Have the only thing I have right now are stickers. I have all the Witchlight cast. Make it ha make it so. I got because I got stickers made of um the fox character. I don't know. What do they say? Exactly. Are you you're talking about you talking about uh, Hayden's character? Yes. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, hmm? that's Nico. Nico, yes. Nico Freya. Yeah, so I got I got some made of Nico. So I and then I have a couple of uh Caitlin. Oh no, I don't have Caitlin's care. Oh, I don't have any of yours. You haven't yeah, given me any. No, I keep forgetting to give them to anybody. <laughs> Sugar peas. But I, I well, I have the rest of them. I have everybody else's. <laughs> Nice. All right. So, folks, um, we need to head back over into game right now. I was reading the chat. My, my brain fizzled for a second, but that's fine. That's fine. I just need more coffee. All right. So, folks, it is time for us to head back into game. Um, let us continue on the way to Thunder Tree here on Dork Tales. Boop. Where's my forest day? Did I close it? I closed Forest Day. Hold on. Forest Day. No, wait, I don't need that. You guys are here now. I'm very brain dead tonight. I, is anybody else, like, stupid tired? Yeah, I've been stupid oh, sure. tired for, like, two weeks now. <sighs> oh, God. This is what mm -hmm. being above 25 is like. I don't want it to be like this forever. It's, no, it's not always like that. Just in, like, most of the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I thought this was just what it was like after you hit 20. No, no. Here, no, oh, no, okay. no, no. Like, the chronic exhaustion thing is not a thing that has to happen. Like, let me, okay, let me preach the good word of getting enough sleep, drinking enough water, act, exercising regularly. Like, if that you're tired... It happens sus. to us because we all, well, at least a number of us, sit for our jobs sit for our hobbies <laughs> and are not great about doing anything other than sitting with the exception of maybe caitlin who has an incredibly high stress job <laughs> when i'm working i got well, yeah. Yeah. Thousand no you're a mom away. that's high stress yeah. that's, that's even scary. worse yeah. yeah but there's all the like <clears throat> as someone who like was dealing with like chronic fatigue for a long time it doesn't have to be like that all the time. And there, there are yeah. things that will make it better. It, okay. If it's you not are normal, normally no. either. So that's what makes these last two weeks really weird mm -hmm. in that I have been exhausted yeah. and sleeping well. Hmm. Ooh, that's like that's passing the, the out and then not wanting to get up. Mm. Like solid, not lying awake, tossing, just not like sleeping, but not being rested. Which right. Is sucked. All right. Yeah. So all right. I'm just going to start putting people on top of horses. <laughs> like in the game, right? <laughs> La uh -huh. Launching unruly players onto horses. I mean, I don't object to that. No, if we, listen, if you can launch me onto a horse from here, I'll be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind going riding. Riding's cool. <laughs> you didn't what notice that, like uh, the 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 opening in your ceiling that's been suddenly installed. Ceiling cat, ceiling cat. You wake up that morning and begin heading out to Thunder Tree. Cloud cover above you is dark and a bit of rain begins falling down on you as you ride. You're not far away now, but long shadows stretch out from the tree line. 
as you make your way toward Thunder Tree. Gradually, the trail becomes an old, overgrown lane, winding between dilapidated buildings, choked with vines and brush. In the middle of the settlement rises a steep hill, upon which stands a stone tower. It has a partially collapsed roof and an adjoining cottage. A dirt road hugs the base of the hill and wends its way between old stone houses, many of which are roofless ruins. Other buildings appear intact. The whole place is eerily silent. As you clop up, a wooden sign is nailed to a post in the center of the road. It reads, Danger! Plant monsters and zombies. Turn back now. Well, I think we're in the right place. I think they made that up. That does, that does seem like it, yes. I... Oh, well, we were hearing about the, the, the... How they didn't stay dead, so... Or something like that, maybe? Question? Was that here or was that at the well? Uh, that was here. Uh, there was a volcanic oh. eruption, for those of you who remember. There was a volcanic eruption that... Uh, um, created a bunch of undead. Okay, so that, yeah, sorry. that You're right, that was definitely here. I think they're for true. I think Damn. that's true. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping it wasn't a real undead situation. Is, is there another sign slightly further down that says no for serious? turn back now no but if you want to make me an okay. investigation roll you can sure uh not terrible okay um can i use determination totally uh that'll make it a 15 15 looking forward and uh, I'll just refill that determination with the other one that was just bought for you a little while ago um, looking at the sign you could tell that the wood is actually it, it, the wood is pretty old however the painted on letters are not flaking at all you'd think this has probably been placed for only maybe a couple months pretty fresh someone's yeah, been this here this sign is pretty new it wouldn't surprise me if this was um the work of the druid. Oh. Uh, Radoth? Do you think they set themselves up in the big tower in the middle of town? Where would you set yourself up if you were in an abandoned town? Somewhere... Honestly, probably the least in, it's the most in, inconspicuous building there was. Hmm. If I didn't want to be found. But I don't necessarily know that everybody's very smart. Well, zombies and plant monsters hmm. are probably pretty good deterrents. This is true. Um, when we get slightly closer to the buildings, hmm. um, I am going to activate Divine Sense. Okay. Um, just to see, it's a 60 foot. Um, no, it doesn't see through buildings, does it? Not until, not nothing behind total cover. Okay. But several of those buildings have open doorways. They do. It appears. So I just don't want to be, try and get a sense so there's nothing coming around the building at us. Like 60 sure. foot circle around me, basically, of, all right, nothing within how, 60 feet. How, how, taller the roofs so the buildings here are about about 10 feet tall um some of them most of the ruined ones are about five to eight feet high of of um without the roofs um you can make your way through them the debris if you move through any of the debris of the ruined houses so any that don't have a roof on them or obvious walls basically uh, they count as difficult terrain to move through but you can move through the walls without trouble as well um if you move through any of the brush, which are the obvious not trees, green spaces, you can um, use those as partial cover if needed. 
Yes, Carmilla. May I climb on a roof? Absolutely. There is a, a roof directly in front of you to the north here. And let's switch to our maps while we're doing this. So you're atop your horse right now, moving over there. You can head <laughs> to the first can't get it. Okay. So you can go ahead and climb up there using your climbing speed. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll hop up and sort of walk to the edge and sort of try to take a look around. Sounds good. Make me a perception roll. Oh, worse for this. Ha! Ah, there's the net one. As you are looking around, you are going to see that the top of this building that you are standing on is covered in strange ivy. And as you're looking around, you're going to notice that much of Thunder Tree is coated in very strange vegetation. Some of it looks like things you've seen before, but is much thornier than normal. As you crouch down to take a look at something, you see a bit of motion to the south. And as you lean forward, you are going to hear the sound of something shuffling beneath you in the house. She will look over the edge at everyone and point down into the house. Ooh. And does anybody here have a passive perception below 12? Hello? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Mine is 12. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, Anthea, you will not be surprised as there is a sudden motion from the south. Lyric, however, you will be surprised as two small men, well, two small trees shaped like humanoids are going to rush out from around the, the, ta uh, the house to the south and charge you. Can I get an initiative roll? Oh, no. Oh, balls. That's a nat 20. All right, let's do it. Oh, 21. Also nat I, 20. Are also you kidding, have a really? Passive yeah, actually. Of 12. So anybody with a 12 or higher is not going to be caught off. Oh, pardon me. Anyone with a, well, I said 12, so it's gonna be 12. It was 13, but 12, I said 12, oh. so I'm gonna I'm gonna be an honest, an honest DM. Oh my god, Anthea with that with the 23! Yeah. Uh, and okay, so Anthea, Two. and then it's gonna be Twig Blade and Lyric, followed by uh down to and then to Carmilla. Then to Sindri, then Ella. All right. These two creatures scuttle out of the brush nearby and charge at your horses. Uh, however, Anthea, you are going to be able to act first. You see one of them round the corner, raise its arms and make this kind of <laughs> noise as it rattles its branches and thorns at you. What do you do? Well, I mean, this would be a really good time for a firebolt, I think. Oh, no. Yeah. I hate it. Oh, yes. Let's do it. Um, I mean, if a 16 is going to hit it. Oh, well, a you know. Yeah, let's a just A 16 go is going to hit it. Nice. Uh, roll me damage. That was a one for damage. All right, uh, so... It's going to wing the side of it, and it's going to let out this shriek as it ignites a bit of flame uh, dancing up its arm. It's going to be Ooh. definitely taking more damage than you thought it should from that. Oh, wow. Um, I just want to take one look at something, because I think I now have a bonus action. 
It could be a stat block or some other action. Okay. I am going to... And PB, force damage. Anyway, I'm going to say... Now's your chance to shine! Go! Or whatever, I don't know. Um, but this is your moment. And I'm gonna lob a, um... Actually, it's just gonna, she's just gonna take it out of her pocket. And it's gonna look like this... You know those, like, jelly, but contained, um, stress balls you'd get as a kid? Yeah, it's gonna kind of look like that, only very big and misshapen and really jiggly. Mm. Uh, surrounding a heart. It's gonna look all okay. swirly on the inside. And, um, she's gonna kind of toss it out from, oops, sorry, toss it from her bag, her satchel, onto the ground in front of her. And, um, it's going to make a oh what force strike. What hmm? kind of creature is it? It's a homunculus. What does it look like? Servant. It's a tiny construct. It looks like the thing I just explained. Yeah, it looks like an ooze. Oh, so basically. it actually does look like ooze. Okay. I yeah. thought that that was what you were summoning it with, like a Pokeball. So that was my bad. Oh. <laughs> no, okay, right. so let me just, uh, I'll pull an ooze out for you. Okay. Um, what color is it? I was imagining like a purplish grayish. Let's see if we can find a purplish gray. Dragon blood ooze sounds promising. That seems pretty good. Yeah, it's a little reddish, but it'll do for this episode. Well, that works. I mean, it's around the red heart stone thing. All right. Your ooze is going to hit the battlefield. And um, uh, what do you oh, have it do? Proficiency bonus. Oh, um, a force strike. So it's a ranged weapon attack. So basically, I use my spell attack modifier to hit. And it can hit one target I can see. And yeah. All right. So go ahead and make me an attack roll against the All twig blade. All right. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, no, it's going to miss. I'm not going to use my my proficiency bonus. I don't know if I could. Anyway. You could. No, that's okay. I don't think a 13 is going to do anything. Okay. Um, oh, that's so close. Try again next time. It's going to go and shoot at it. Uh, and it is just going to barely miss it, almost hitting it with that. Uh, 11, you said? Yeah, 11. Oh, just barely missed it. <laughs> As it sails by, it's going to make kind of this gurbling, like, frustrated noise. That's okay. So pat, pat, pat. All we'll right. Get him next uh, time. Lyric, it is you and this twig by that, like acting simultaneously. Uh, I it I'm is going. Surprised, so. Oh, you are surprised. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. It is going to rush up and attack Sindri's horse. That is going to hit Sindri's horse. What if I said no? <laughs> I don't have anything no. that stops it. I just want to say no. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you yeah. can absolutely say no. Uh, it is going to attack your horse, which is going to cause... Uh, your horse takes five points of damage as it slashes along its flank. Uh, I'm going to spend a drama bomb. And can you do me a favor and uh, make me a deck save? I mean, you're a monk, so good luck. I mean, hey, that might actually... Oh, that's a 25. A 25? All right, your horse is going to rear and try to kick you off. Yeah. as it is suddenly in pain. Uh, but you are going to manage to hold on. Lyric, you are surprised. Uh, now, there is going to be a rush as another one of these small creatures is going to rush around behind and charge at um, at Alessandra's horse. Uh, that is going to be a hit as well, Alessandra. Uh, your horse is going to take four points of damage. Just so you are aware, your horses have 13 hit points each. Uh, your horse is going to rear up as well. Please make me a deck save. Natural one. Natural one. Perfect. Uh, you are going to be thrown to the ground and are going to take eight points of, bl of uh, bludgeoning damage. Ugh. And are prone. Don't like. Perfect. 
All right. Uh, and as you hit the ground, you you are going to see stars for a second as, the, as these two small twig creatures loom over you, little snashing and lashing down at you with their viney arms. And you are going to hear the sound of from a house nearby. And immediately you will smell the scent of rot with your divine senses. as something begins to shamble out the door of the house that Carmilla is on. Carmilla, it is your turn. I am surprised. Fair. Um, you know what? You are not surprised by whatever's coming out of this house. Because oh. you were watching the house. Okay. Uh, can I jump down and attack it? Absolutely. Cool. Do I have the high ground? You have the high ground. You can make me with advantage, yeah. Don't do Hooray. it. Don't do it. <laughs> I will. I will flip over it and lose my legs. I was secretly hoping I rolled like double nat ones on that, but no, uh, that's a 17. A 17 is absolutely going to hit. Uh, jumping down, you are going to see that this creature that ambles out of the top of this building is coated in ash. It looks like it looks like this corpse suffocated to death. You can see patches of ash holding its lips shut. And as you slash it, it lets out a moan and there's this horrible wrenching, tearing noise as its lips maintain their glue together and a second mouth opens up as the flesh beneath the lips tears, revealing teeth. No, no, it doesn't. All right. I, I'm, I'm with Chris on this one. No. All right. Roll me damage. <laughs> Uh, I would, uh, I'm also going to use one of my superiority die because I rekindled those. Um, uh, I'm going to use pushing attack. So okay. can it make me a strength save of eight plus two is 10 eight. plus three is 13. Ooh, I don't think it can. Uh, it is, I have a 10. Okay, cool. So it's going to take damage. Okay, so uh, yeah, roll me. That's seven plus three. So it takes 10 damage. Is it okay. standing? It is standing. Yeah. Um, does that was that your base damage on top of that? No, that's 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 everything. I didn't roll very well. Okay. Um. Does, does oh wait. Pushing attack. No, I, I re hang on. A great weapon for fighting. I reroll twos. One sec. Oh yes, you do. Okay. No. So that's going to be a fifteen. Uh, fifteen um, damage is better than yeah. ten. And then if it is still standing, so pushing attack. Um, allows me to uh because it failed its save it's going to push up to 15 feet away uh okay. so i would like to kick it back into the house and close the door <laughs> okay so you are going to <laughs> knock it back into the house and shut the door perfect um all right are you gonna put your back against and be like do not go in there <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> do not go in there okay uh, yes all right, across the way, Sindri, you've got two twig blights that are hurting your horses, and Elisandra is prone on the ground. What do you do? Hey, so I love this, the day after everyone gets new class abilities. I think it's really cool. Uh, I'm going to breathe fire on these two twig blights. Uh, <laughs> I learned my lesson. All right, <laughs> uh, you, you see this poor horse take its damage and are going to feel this this anger boil up inside of you as you feel your key become hot and searing inside of you describe what happens uh so sindri is going to like uh like throw his cloak up a little bit to try and like block the block vision on from the from his horse from seeing what he's about to do and a, a bright golden light is going to travel up his stomach and through his throat and he's going to belch out a cloud of golden flame Okay. And hopefully he doesn't like absolutely suck at this. Uh, do I get saved for this? Yeah, you do. Uh, okay. It's it's probably uh, probably DC thirteen. Unless okay. do you add your proficiency modifier to spell saves? Uh, spell save DC. Uh, you add your so it's eight plus your casting uh, modifier. Casting modifier, which is proficiency and um, attribute. Okay, or so ability. it'll be thirteen right now. Okay. So, woo! Uh, that's going to be uh, five points of fire damage. Cool. And is it half on a success? Uh, half on success, yeah. 
Okay, so five points of fire damage becomes two points of fire damage for the one that succeeded, which is four points of fire damage for it. Uh, there is going to be a sudden burst of flame that ignites all of these twig blights right over you, Alessandra. And um, your horse is not going to rear back, Sindri. However, Alessandra's horse is going to turn and look at you with this wide-eyed, what-the-hell kind of look. Hey, this, uh, if I, oh, uh, I'll just flick at a sugar cube with my bonus action, or my object interact. It narrows its eyes in a, all right, we're cool, kind of look. <laughs> flick. Okay. All right, those, those twig blights are going to collapse to the ground in front of Alessandra. Ella, it is your turn. What do you do? All right, so... From what I can see of Carmilla, it seems like she's facing something. She has her back to a door, holding it shut, and um, she is just kind of like struggling with it. The building, she said, had something in it. All right, I will move over to try and help her, because that seems like my current foes have, are no more. Sounds good. You are also going to, as you are moving, hear a splintering noise coming from the back side of the house. Okay. So do you head up to help her? Um... I think I might go and look and see what's, what's happening back there. Okay, so you can make it. Uh, so from where you were, you were prone. So you'll lose half your movement standing up. Yeah. 5, 10, 15. Are you going to do a double move? I guess, because I can't really do anything else this turn otherwise. Okay, so. Boop, 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 boop. All right, moving up to the top of the house, uh, you are going to be able to see that the back door is going to smash down and a zombie shambles out covered in ash and dust you still have a bonus action uh celestial revelation radiant soul i sprout two luminous spectral wings <laughs> i now have a flying speed and deal extra radiant damage oh balls um on each attack so Level i am ready now for my day. next turn <laughs> All right, sounds good. Uh, it is going to crash through the door and is going to rush you. 5, 10, 15, 20. It only had 20 feet of movement remaining. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Two more zombies are going to amble out behind it. You know what? I've got Hurt the Morse for a reason. Uh, one of them, the one at the back, is going to rush out, hit the ground, and you're going to see... It hits the ground so hard that it's chest and legs. You know how sometimes when you hit the ground, your legs will cartwheel over you? Uh -huh. It does it so hard that its hips keep going 360 degrees. And you'll hear a squelch. It will grab the ground and start running at you on all fours. That's gross. Ew. Uh, and it's going to make an attack roll on you. That's going to be a 19 plus. Ah, uh, that just hits, yeah. Okay, so grand total of the slam attack of 22. Um, that is going to be, um, real quick, uh, Lyric, you are surprised, but it has been your turn, which means you can use reactions if you want. Oh, I don't know if I have any useful reactions for this. The only one you would have is potentially Silvery Barbs. I do not have that. Okay. Uh, it is going to lunge towards Alessandra as you go uh, Angelic. Uh, and is only going to do a total of four points of bludgeoning damage to you as it slams into you, trying to knock you to the ground, but is not going to be able to. And top of the initiative... Zombie, zombie, zombie. Uh, Anthea, it is you again. Right, I got distracted. Um, that's a lot of zombies. Um... Okay, I'm going to uh, rinse and repeat. I'm going to throw a little ball of fire at it, like okay. a fire bolt. Sounds good. The one that Alessandra's facing or the one that's the approaching her? One that's approaching her. Okay, sounds I good. I a better angle on that one. Sure, make me an attack roll. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Um, that's a pretty 
22 to hit. That will what absolutely hit this zombie. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Perfect. Sorry. That what is what? four points of damage. All right, four points of damage as you hit the first one with a fire bolt. Um, it is going to burn slightly, and you're going to see this plume of ash explode off of it when your fire bolt hits. And what does your Uzi friend do? Oh, oh please tell yes. me that's using your Uzi. Rat -a -tat -a -tat -a -tat. Oh my gosh. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Ooze friend is going to try to force strike again. All right, He's same one. Bonus action. Yep. All right, let's do it. Same one. Let's get him. Let's get him. Oh, 19 on the dice is going to be a It's going to hit. Roll me damage. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, what's, uh, not a whole lot, but let's use this one. Six points of damage. Oh, hold on. Right. Not even. Not even. No, nope. um, because I was like, it's not my spell modifier. That's only three points of damage. Force damage. All right. <laughs> a blob of, how does it, is it like a blob of ooze that it throws out of its own body? Yeah, absolutely. So right. it's kind of like if you had a potion that got turned into an ooze. It's I like need a... to show you, um, I have potion golems in one of my books. My, oh, nice. my non-wizards books. They're pretty great. Um, all right, so a little glob of that is going to hit, and you're going to see mm. an ear hit the ground as this thing goes... Oh. It starts oh. smacking at the side of its face that it just got ripped off. And uh, all right, uh, it is going to be the zombie's turn that is on the other side of the door from Carmilla. Carmilla, can you make me a contested strength roll? Sure. Oh, no. Sounds like a nat 20. It sounds like a nat 20. Uh, does is not for me. All right. There is going to be a crashing sound as you hold the door shut and a hand is going to punch through it and tr attempt to grab you. Is that the one? That's the one. Uh, so it punches through, and then you're going to hear a as a foot crashes through the wall, and another foot crashes through the wall, and another hand crashes through the wall, and it tries to grab you from behind, and you're just going to step out there and see this zombie has stuck itself in the doorway with all four limbs. Spectacular. Because it's it's just, it's beautiful is what it is. <laughs> um, all right, Lyric, you are up. What do you do? Awesome. Okay, so there's two that are right near Alessandra. Mm -hmm. Which one looks more The one that's been shot twice by fire. Uh, the one that looks like it is... Only one of them has been hit so far. And that is the one that okay. has a fire plume. It's the, the southern one. Okay, so the one that's a little bit closer to the building. Okay, so I'm actually targeting the one that's a little bit further away to the north. Okay. It's like what? That like the one that's creepy and on all fours. Yeah, that one because that's horrifying. And this is where Lyric says no. Um, yeah. So I'm going to cast. I hope this works. Um, blindness, deafness. So I'm going to make it blind. Okay. What's my save? It is a Constitution saving throw, DC 14. Right. Let me just check its con real quick. That is a 17. Damn it. <sighs> so that'll that'll fizzle, I think. Tragic. Okay. I think she's got a very unhappy expression because this thing is gross. Um it's very gross. But what's also gonna happen is I'm gonna use my bonus action to give Alessandra Bardic inspiration. Perfect. Alessandra, you have Bardic Inspiration. And uh, that is very useful uh, because it is almost your turn. Uh, the one behind the door is going to attempt to push through its ally. Um, but you are on the other side of the door, so that's not really going to work. Uh, hold on one moment. Boop, boop, boop. Um, all right. It's going to spend its entire action doing this. It is going to... 
Uh, you are holding the door there, Carmilla, and there's going to be a shattering noise as one of the zombies smashes out the front window of the house and stumbles to the ground. However, that did take its entire action to do so. Uh, it is now uh, it is now prone on the ground, uh, and it is your turn. So I don't know if I have quite enough movement, but you said these are ten foot walls. These uh, so the this is a full house. It has a roof. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You and can so climb you up. said they were ten foot. If they were, they're tall. they're about ten feet tall. Yeah. Okay. So if I use my movement, if I use ten feet to the up the wall. I can get to the corner of the house. Okay. Can I jump and attack, or would I have to use additional movement? According to Raw, you do, but according to okay. being a badass, you don't. <laughs> so I'm going to say that if you want to run up the house... Yeah. And you want to just basically like go... Hup -a -da, hup -a -da, hup -a -da, hup -a and then just like jump down on this guy... Yeah. Yeah, you totally can. You can even uh, to make to to make it worth. Um, I, I'll even go right in between the zombies, so the danger level is. Yeah. Okay. Danger level <laughs> pays off the level. extra five feet of movement. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It does. Cool. Uh, We're turning this awesome. into one of my so homebrew she'll... games now, aren't we? <laughs> she'll kind oh, of spider climb. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, she'll spider climb up the wall. Be now seeing that. Uh oh, they have another point of egress. So. Uh, uh, let's get out of here and try to make them have to come around the back um, as I hear a kerfuffle. Uh, I'm going to jump down and attack the one that is farther away from Alessandra. Um, does anybody else want to move closer with a reaction? Sindri. Uh, what's your, yeah, Sindri, what's your movement? Can you use the horse's movement? I mean, I have, I already have 40, uh, 40 feet, feet of movement. Yeah, you could you could make him use the horse's movement if you really want to. If you to. use the horse's movement, you get to, it's half your movement, so you could you move 30 on the horse. Uh, and then you could jump off the horse on your turn, but... Or just kick from the horse. Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. I, I th We're going to have to deal with the ones inside the house. Uh, is the door broken Not through? Not yet. <laughs> the, the door is kind of jammed at the moment. Okay, okay perfect. One of these. Uh, in that case, I will use 30 feet of movement to go uh, okay. do, I do corner to corner on this. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, as as Carmilla jumps up on the roof, we'll sort of get a really quick lay of the land and whistle uh, uh, to make the horse sort of jolt and run over this way. You're training this horse uh, to be a to be a war horse. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're getting there. We'll get them. Uh, and then I'm going to jump down on this thing. Uh, do I get high ground advantage again? You, everybody gets high ground advantage. Fantastic. I'm going to use it on you someday. But. Oh, absolutely you are. Uh, that is a nat 20. Oh, beautiful. Who are you giving your inspiration yeah. to? Uh, I guess... Well, I just got... Um, Sindri's next in initiative. And I was going to say, let's do Sindri, since um, I sort of summoned them over here. Uh, so that's also going to be double both my damage because I get the D8 from my, um, uh, I was going to use my D8 to maneuver. So I get All right, that sounds attack. Good. So that's going to be 10. Are you, and, and you're attacking the one that 17. is on the east? Okay. Y yes. Yes. The one on my right. Yes. Yes. Um, 17 plus, so it's 20 total. How many? 20. 20. All right. It is going to stumble uh, as you bury your blade in it. It is going to look down at you as one of its arms falls off. And then it's going to look back up at you going and try to shrug and reach toward you. Uh, <laughs> but it is really badly damaged. Um, this thing, um, I would say it's near death, but it has been near death for about 30 years. <laughs> um, that was a hell of a hit. Do you have anything else you can do? Uh... Uh, you know what? This has been a crazy turn. I'm going to action surge and attack this thing again. Do it. Just to try to get rid of it. <laughs> uh, ooh, that's a 10. Yeah, even Ten determination total. isn't going to save that. That's going to be a hit. Oh, 12, 12 saves it? 
you, uh, no, you didn't spend it. So it, a tan oh, hits. It's really? a zombie. It's a zombie. Okay. That's wild. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what their. Any... Do you want to know what their what their AC is? Sure. Eight. <laughs> That's funny. That's why um, you can throw them at uh, at first levels. <laughs> there you go, uh, and that'll be ten damage. Okay, uh, I rolled its undead fortitude and got a total of a one unnatural. Um, all right, uh, how do you do it? Uh, you should have stayed dead and just decapitate it. All right, it is going to collapse to the ground, dead. Err than it was, uh, and as it does, um, its body is going to spew ash into the air. Uh, this does not harm anyone, this does not obscure anything, but there's now a cloud of ash hanging in the air where this thing died. That is concerning. It is. All right, uh, that is your action, Carmilla, unless you have a uh, bonus action you'd like to use? No, uh, it's my second, my, um... Action, action surge is a bonus action. Oh, it is it? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, uh, Sindri, you're up. Uh, th thank you, thank you for getting my to my horse for getting me over here. I'll give it a, like a reassuring uh, pat on the side as I hop off and square up with the, against these zombies. Uh, right. I'm gonna lay, lay into the one that's been attacking Carmilla. I, do I have to clear, uh, declare declare? Um, advantage before i roll i know i ask this like every session yes but... if you're using if you're using uh the inspiration go at you declare it beforehand if it's, okay so uh... i'm not gonna use it i'm just and i'm just gonna use fists for all of these um just like it's these are undead so i'm gonna go full wwe style on them you're gonna go all out uh so 16 on the first one dealing That's a hit. seven points of bludgeoning damage okay and then 16 for the next one. That's a hit. Dealing five points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use my key point to do a flurry of blows for an additional one. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, and that's going to be a 23 to hit, so. Okay, so roll me another roll seven me points on. of damage. Another seven. One sec. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, seven points of damage. You are going to crank it. Uh, where's the last hit land? Uh, so it. he's just going to, like... Uh, like grab, like just like lay into the body and just like aim for legs, aim for body, aim for chest, and he's gonna actually do the Shatner like two handed hit, just like something that he is totally egregious to do in a like, a fight against something that moves quick. But he's just gonna lay into these zombies and just like hit them as hard as he can. You are going to come down with your Shatner. It's gonna hit this one in the top of the head. You're gonna hit it so hard its head is going to cave in to its sternum. With this squelch of old rot, the zombie is going to go and groan out at you from the center of its chest. You hit this thing so hard, its spine just split in half. It should be dead, and yet somehow its undead fortitude is holding it to this plane. Lady Alessandra, help. <laughs> Alessandra, it is your turn. All right. I am going to attack the one... The one that's on all fours going... Whatever the one that's farthest north. That is the one that's going... All right. I'm going to attack it with my sword, please. All right, please do. Uh, I rolled a 19, so I think that hits. That is absolutely a hit. Roll me damage. Uh, are that you smiting? is going to be... Bardic. Sorry? Oh, just remember that you also have the Bardic Inspiration, and it does different things if you want to use it. Okay. That's true. The bardic does explode if it goes off. Uh, that is 11 points of regular damage and 2 okay. points of radiant damage. Okay. For my relo relevation. Revelation? Okay. Are you going to are, are you going to spend the bardic or nah? Um or are you going to save it? I think I'd save it. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else you're doing? Hit. So your sword is going to come down blazing with the light of um, with, the, with the light of your ASMR heritage, slashing into this one. Radiant light is going to burn away the charred flesh, uh, and you have a bonus action. Okay, uh, so it is not down, right? It is not down. Okay, um, I think that's all I can do right now. All right, it is time for some fun. This one is uh, this one acted at the top of the initiative, uh, so that means it is time for the rest to do some stuff. 
Uh, that is going to be... Uh, the one next to Carmilla that is living out of its sternum is going to take an attack at Sindri. Sindri, that's not going to be a hit. It's going to lash out at you going... <gasps> and it's going to kind of like run a hand down the side of your poncho, leaving a smear of gore and ash. Uh, and there is a snarl as another one of these fast runners bursts out of the back door and charges Carmilla. Uh, Carmilla, I'm going to spend... I'm going to spend it. I hurt them more to have advantage on this. That is a nat 20. Uh, and Boom. I'm going to give my inspiration to uh, the zombie that is prone. Uh, Carmilla, that is going to be a total of six points of bludgeoning damage as this one slams into you. And... It is going to grab you with its might and slam you against the side of the building. And there is going to be this this horrible noise as some of the brickwork is going to just shatter inward, Matrix style, as you hit it. And it's going to grab your face and kind of like, like grind you along the side of the building as it does. Now, mind you, like I said before, this building is coated in ivy. And as it drags you along, it's this strange type of ivy leaf that is going to kind of coat your face in a dust as it does. Um, and you are going to... What's your con save bonus? Like seven. Perfect. No, so that's an 11 that. for you. Four. It's four. It's not bad. It's, okay, that's an eight for you then. Okay. Unless you would like to make your con save for this. Uh, no, go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, so you are going to start coughing. Uh, now that said, that does kick a lot of it up into the air around this boy. So, uh, but it's going to pass its con save. What do you know? Perfect. Um, all right. Just wait, does the one next to it? No, it does not. Uh, so as that is kicked up in the air, the one with the sternum, the sternum head is going to be coated with this dust as well and is going to collapse to the ground. Shut up, you sternum head. <laughs> sure, yeah, I know, all right. That's it's just a joke. 90s insult. <laughs> okay, so I have inspiration. Uh, I'm going to use a Hurt the More to get back on my feet as a free action, and then I'll go 5, 10, 50, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Well, you know what? I'll do give myself a free dash. I think that's great. I, I didn't take any damage from that, right? There's just something more concerning happening? Uh, You took six. Six damage, okay. Yeah. Uh, and I am going to... Come and, uh, and sorry, and that was from the hit, not from the dust in the air. That was just from the hit. Okay, yes, thank you. That was just a cinematic effect. Uh, one of the Ash Zombies is going to rear around and charge Sindri. Uh, oh, wait, I have advantage because of that inspiration. All right, that is going to be a 19 to hit Sindri. And Sindri, one of them is going to rush by and is going to give you a kidney shot for three points of damage. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and finally, the zombie in the door is going to try to remove itself from the door. And is going to finally extricate, extricate itself from the door and start shambling around in confusion before slowly starting to make its way over toward Anthea. There is still part of a door stuck to it. Which is actually going to raise its AC by one, now that I think about it. Uh, Anthea, it is your turn. All right. Um, just gonna swing her light crossbow from her back, aim it, and fire at the one. Uh, which one? You know what? She's gonna aim it for the one at the door. With the door. That one. Okay, the one that has uh, like a shield attached to it now. All right, go ahead. Make yeah. it attack roll. Let's go. Get him. Kadunk. Ooh. Uh. Nine. Nine total? Yes. Okay. That is going to hit. I, it's AC yes. is, is nine presently because of the, the door. So that it's just going to manage to go right through. Make me, uh, give me damage. <laughs> nice. Um, I have to go back to this. I got excited about that. She rolls max damage. Even max damage is, like, not super great, but it's a thing. Let's go get him. Nope. That's a four points of piercing. 
just four points of piercing. All right. Zombie, you're going to hear as your as your crossbow bolt punches through the door that's attached to this thing's front. And you'll hear this squelch out the back as the kinetic energy pushes through and lets out just this this bottle rocket worth of gore behind it. Woo! All right, turn your attention to that one. And, All right, um, make me an attack and roll. A bonus action to command it. I'm pretty sure this is the way it works. I think so. Yeah. If it works like a familiar, then yeah, I think so. Um. Or not a familiar and an uh, animal companion thingy. Probably. It just takes my bonus action away from anything else, which I don't think I have any other ones anyways. So. Oh, 11. 11 is going to be a hit. Roll me force damage. Perfect. Uh, it's so hard to find a d4 in my sea of dice here. Asha. Whoa. Uh, six force damage. How does it do it? Woo! Um, it's probably gonna do a bleh and like spit a big glob of what looks like itself at the uh, the shield, and I guess because it's force damage, it's just gonna push it back into, or I guess that's not a good angle for that, into the ground. Okay, it's gonna smash it to the ground, and there's gonna be this beautiful moment watching this zombie collapse to the ground and then slowly it is going to amble itself back to its feet oh oh rats that still counts as a kill a kill is a kill is a kill um <laughs> all right four-legged zombie is going to charge against alessandra on its turn that is going to be a 17 no. Okay, it's gonna. It tried, and that's what's. That's what's really important. At the end of the day. Um, all right, lyric, you're up. So I have a question for you. I probably have. This an is answer. gonna change depending. This will severely impact how I play College of Creation. So I need to know. Oh no. For the rules here, my my instructions for performance of creation. Uh -huh. You channel your magic um, to create one non-magical item of your choice in an unoccupied space within 10 feet of you. Must appear on the surface or in a liquid that can support it. Cannot The value, gold point value uh, cannot be more than 20 times my bard level. So I, right now I think that's 60 gold. And it must be okay. a medium or smaller. Now, for example, if items you can create, see the equipment chapter in the player's handbook. Okay. It'll last two hours. So the question is, mm -hmm. if it's any item that is medium or smaller that is considered a non-magical item, yes, would that potentially include things like poison and holy water and alchemist fire? Because they're items. It doesn't say object. It says item. I mean, I guess so. Uh, let me just quickly review this and see, because this is going to be interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. You're the art of creation, first taught by dragons and gods. Um, you can animate a... Are you talking about the animating performance or the performance, performance of, creation? of creation? This is where you actually create okay. something. It does take a full action, so I couldn't use it immediately. Yes, it counts. It's not... Alchemist fire is alchemical, non-magical, so yes. And holy water. Uh, holy water. It's listed in the no. It's not listed as a magical item, as far as I can tell. It is. If it is not listed as a magical item, then uh, yeah, it doesn't have a magic bonus. Yeah. So, holy water. I'm a little more iffy on. Um. Yeah, it's it's hmm. an odd one because it's technically it's blessed, but it's not magical. Hmm. Hmm. And it's only really useful against specific things, so. Yeah, I'm gonna say. Well, I mean, it's it's listed in the player's handbook as something that is non-magical that you can buy at character creation. So I'm gonna say yes. Hmm. Okay. You're basically cheating a divine holy water. You know what? You're not gonna be able to choose which god though. It's just gonna be holy water, unless yeah, you unless you make a religion roll. 
And it only lasts for two hours. So it's not like we can keep it and carry it around. It's a one and one and done use kind of but thing. But you can like, definitely use holy water to, to cut all your cocktails from now on. Yeah, sure, I could if I really need to. Yeah, really? Or I could just use water, probably. Carmilla, why is it spicy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I'm thinking the best way to do this, because it's within 10 feet of me, I want to yep. get it closest to... I think I'm hopping off my horse that I think I've been on this entire time. Yep, yep, you and have Yep, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, we're going to hop off. And we're gonna move over kind of within a closer range. And I'm going to create a vial of holy water. And it's gonna be in the spot right between me and Alessandra. And then I okay. guess I'll pick it up or something. Yeah, you can use your object to interact to do that. Yeah. I mean, you can I have it like I can't a throw it or do anything else with it yet, but. Okay. That sounds, that sounds really dumb and I love it. Let's do it. Cool. And then I That's... guess I have a bonus action still to give Bardic inspiration to somebody. So, Sindri. All right, Sindri, you have Bardic. Thank you. All right, Carmilla, you're up. Well, hello. Uh, I am not up. I am down on the ground with all you peasants. <laughs> Good word. Um, no, I couldn't even say it with a straight face. Uh, I will attack the one that's close to me. Sounds good. Uh, that is a 18. An 18 will hit. Um, what do I want to do? Can I do something to this thing? Um, yeah. I'm gonna distract it. So I use my distracting attack. Okay, do I have to make a save for that? Uh, no, it's just the next person gets advantage. Perfect. The, the, yeah, the next yeah, not the next person that isn't me to attack this thing gets advantage. Uh, that's ten plus three is thirteen damage. Thirteen damage. All right, that's going to definitely hit, uh, and definitely bite in a bit. Um, it is going to stumble a bit back and kind of like snarl at you as it does so. It is still on its feet. Uh, I think for funsies, just as a more for color than anything, but also because I'm a little hurt, uh, I'm gonna snarl back at it and bare my fangs and uh, roll and use my second wind as a bonus action. Perfect. Uh, and just like have the cuts on her face sort of knit up as uh, she snarls back. Uh, and that's a one. Uh, plus two is three healing. I mean, that's something at least. It's something. All right. So as you do that, uh, Sindri, it is your turn. All right. Time to uh, go to town on some zombos again. Uh, first, I'm going to start uh, fighting the one that uh, Lady Alessandra is face facing. Okay. Um, uh 14 to hit. That is a hit. Uh, so, sorry, uh, 7 damage. 7 damage? Alright, you slash into it, but it's undead flesh still continues moving. What do you do? Uh, I'm gonna punch it again. Punch uh, it again? So, uh, so that's another 6 points of damage. Another 6 points of damage? Alright, you are going to punch into it. Your fist is going to explode out the other side, but it is still up. It lurches back. The, the moment of death seems to take it for a second. Uh, and and I'll, I'll, I'll spend the key point for the flurry of blows. Just flurry of I've blows. had oh, enough wait, of Pardon this. me. At your level, does I just have? Let me check one thing real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Nope. Okay, continue, please. Yeah. I was double checking if magic overrid that, but it's uh, it's it's two different types of things. Magic is not one of them. And then, so an another hit. Okay. And that's another eight points of damage. Okay, this time it takes. How do you kill it? Uh, I'm just gonna rip my arm out through the like the top of it. I'm already halfway through. Just go up. Oh, this so poncho is gonna be so gross. Yeah, I need a wash. Uh, and just like sl like slump all the like gore off of him. And Lady Elsander, can you get the next one? 
All right, Lady Alessandra, there are two more in your line of sight. What do you do? Um, you get advantage on the one near me. This is true. The one to the north? Yes. Uh, all right, she will head to it, and she is going to do it by flying to it. Because, hell yes, I'm going to fly with my flying speed. But I think she stays very close to the ground and just, like, boom, across those, what, ten feet? Like an anime character? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, totally. Sword up. And it takes you a full it. six seconds, but it, you move ten feet. And it's just. I was kind of thinking of when, like, Celestial Re uh, Revelation happens, is that, like, she's holding her sword, then it glows, and then she glows in the wings form. Like, Sailor Moon transformation, but not quite that long. Uh, that is going to be uh, 18 to hit. The, yep. Uh, that is going to be 10 damage plus 2 radiant damage. Okay. Um, how do you do it? Um, I think instead of stopping at all, she just goes right through it and turns back around right to get the other one. Okay. Sounds good. So if you Thank you. Stop moving. The sword just goes through. She flies through, turns, and comes back. Does your sword sound kind of like like it's humming, like vroom, vroom, vroom? Maybe just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the one to the south is going to snarl and charge at you, uh, seeing you as a very good threat. I'm going to spend a hurt the more, which was very well spent, I must say. Um, if I combine those dice, they still don't hit you. I have a 13 if I put them together and add my attack bonus and maybe plus one. All right, and then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, the deanimated zombie, well, the reanimated zombie, I should say, uh, that um, Caitlin, you had Anthea shoot, and then uh, the door zombie. Uh, that door zombie. door zombie is going to charge and take a shot at your Uzi. And that's going to be a 19. Oh, yeah. That, well, that'll hit it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and that is a total of three points of damage. Okay. As it is going to reach out and grab onto the stone heart and start squeezing Ooh. it. You're going to see a little crack go down the side of it. Oh, no. And uh, then it is going to be uh, not the zombies turns anymore. Uh, top of the initiative with Anthea. It is your turn. Hey, you get away from him! And I'm going to take another shot at him. Sounds good. With my hand. That's good. Uh, it's a dirty 20. That's a hit. Roll me damage. Yeah. Wow. Three points of piercing damage. All right. You go. are going to punch a hole in the side of its head. And it is going to turn and look at you as its head sags for a minute and then raise its head and snarl. It's undead fortitude still keeping it alive. Get him again! And it's the ooze is going to patoo because it's still up. All right, go ahead. All right. There we go. Uh... Now, is this a ranged 15. attack? Fifteen. Oh, yeah. I guess that's disadvantage, right? It is disadvantage. Nine. <laughs> Nine is what you needed. <laughs> nice. Uh, again, I keep losing all my D4s. What the heck? Okay. That that's okay. Uh, you actually don't do that because in your house, that would be awful. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Every single D4 we own. Ooh. Um, four. All Make right. How does your Uzi do it? It's going to, because it's really close to it, it's going to patoo right in its eye socket. Or what was its eye socket? And explode its head. Beautiful. Then, it is. Uzi <gasps> uh, cute. All right, that zombie is dead, dead, dead. And now we are like triple dead at this point. Lyric, you're up. <laughs> yeah, I've got this thing of holy water. I would like to throw it. I could okay. throw it up to five, 20 feet. 
Shattering on All impact. Right. So I'm going to try and throw it at that one remaining zombie over there. And I believe this is a for throne. Mm -hmm. No, it's not a finesse. So I feel like this would just be a strength to throw it. Uh, yeah. Or would you do dex? I, I, assuming... I have something good happens. Choose. choose. You, could, you could throw it with charisma if you really wanted to for something good happens. Sure, I'll throw it with charisma. You spin around and do a cool pose. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, come on, dice, don't be stupid. So that. Oh my god, that's not. That's cocked. There we go. Okay. So if I'm throwing it, I'm just. I'm not. I'd, wouldn't be proficient. It would just be my strength to this. Uh, so don't worry about damage. You will hit. It will shatter, and you will deal two d six radiant damage. Okay, because if I'm doing it, I'm just trying to figure out the actual if I hit it successfully. Uh, you a, will hit it. What was your total? Yeah, it's in the. That's what I'm trying to figure out what I'm adding to it because it's charisma is plus four, and then I'm rolled a fourteen. But do I yeah. add proficiency bonus to that? Yes. I'm just wondering. Okay. Yes, you so do. If I add proficiency, then it's a. 30, 20. And then for undead. It's 2d6 it. points of radiant damage. Yes. And that is what I had separated out. So. Okay. Yeah. It's treated as an improvised weapon. So I don't know if in this case it would get that extra two because proficiency. I don't think you get that for improvised. But anyway. I'm sorry. Uh, that's a six and a four. Okay. Six and a four. Ten points of damage that is radiant is going to scald into this one. Uh, burning it deeply with radiant damage as it rains down around it, coating its ashy flesh. Good hit. Do you do anything else? Hmm. That's about all I can do at the moment. I could give another bardic, but I feel like those two still have them, right? Mm-hmm. Alessandra and, and Sindri. So I think I'm actually going to just stop with that. All right. Sounds good. Next on the initiative. Sorry, I'm just double checking to see. I'm checking a forum to see if anybody's answered the holy water question. And some guy yeah. says no, but I don't agree with them. Oh, well, yeah. But the they did I've say. Been looking saying yes, so. they, they did say the best thing you should do, by the way, for future reference, is when you can create larger items, create pipe organs 30 feet above people. So, yes, that will depend on if you allow me to create things that are outside of the equipment chapter of the... Now, that is I, for ideas. I will see... So, I see a pipe organ inside of that. It's a musical instrument. Cool. I see I see a suit of plate armor doing just as good a job. Yeah, but it's not and as fun. And I also see using an illusion to make something look like a regular set of stairs, but also just having a single plank in there being just one that's about to drop as soon as they try and Perfect. move around. All right. The one that so, looks like it's broken, probably. Screw with people. Yeah. All right. So uh, now it is Carmilla's turn as Radiant, uh, radiant um, Light bathes this thing from your holy water. Uh, Carmilla, what do you do? Uh puts up an arm and hisses slightly um <laughs> uh and then seeing that she has not been harmed by this uh will take a swing down at this last guy presumably last guy theoretically bring it all right Whoopa. that is a nat 20 oh yeah burr, 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 burr. give it to me R rolling crits Oh, where's my new chat? There we go. Whoa, bam! I can't roll ones. Whoa, bam! Uh, oh, this, I, I do higher damage when I'm not gritting. Uh, that's gonna be a twelve. All right, how do you do it? <laughs> uh, I think uh, she kind of uh, dodges back away from this holy water, hisses a little bit, and then seeing this like angelic being next to her tries to like catch that and turn it into this big backswing and just come straight down and uh slice it in twain all right 
the zombie collapses to the ground, turning into ash as it does. It collapses into ash, and there's a moment of silence as you all look around and appraise the situation. And then... Carmilla, you start to feel dizzy. Looking down at your at your your prey, this destroyed zombie, the ash still hanging in the air, you are going to smell sweet musk and yeast, like cookie yeast. And then you're going to faint. Carmilla is going to collapse to the ground. Carmilla? Uh, what, oh, what just that's happened? Not good. Did something hit her? Uh, Cinder will run over and take a look. All right, make me a medicine check. Ten. She's not harmed. She doesn't. There's nothing. I can't see anything. What was, was that vial you threw? Come over. It was holy water. Can find. Don't to deal with zombies. It, it it was very effective. I don't. Did she didn't seem burned by it or anything? Can you make me an investigation roll, Lady Alessandra, mm -hmm. if you are looking around? Uh, sixteen. The side of this building has. It looks like in the past couple months, maybe, has been seeded with this strange plant. It has silvery green leaves that kind of sweat this fine iridescent powder. Nature roll? You can make me a nature roll, please. Dirty 20. It's Sanctum Sage a fairly rare, very hard to grow plant that is an irritant to the undead. And you can see it coating her lips. What are you is doing it safe here? safe for most people though? Safe, completely safe for most people. You'll hear a voice coming from the south. What are you doing here? Hello? Who's there? Who's there? You'll hear the trill of a fox and see a, um, a red fox run up the side and leap onto the shoulders of a human woman with long white hair dressed in a green robe. She's old, in her 60s probably, and peers up at you. You shouldn't be here. Didn't you see the sign I left for you? Well, we were sent here. And we are looking for someone. I would love to cast Detect Magic just to kind of see if this is an illusion or something. Sounds good. Go ahead. So that's just, yeah, first level. Sense okay. the presence of any magic within 30 feet. So looking at this, way. you can see that she has several magic items on her. Mm -hmm. uh, but she and I learned is... any magic schools that they have, if any. Uh, yes, she has a um, uh, she has a small aura of transmutation on a bracelet she's wearing and a, a ring that is kind of wreathed in abjuration. Okay, but it doesn't seem like so she's not an illusion and she isn't like shape shifted. She is not, no. Okay. Hmm. Didn't you read the sign? This is yes. dangerous for travelers. No. We have the druid. A druid? I'm for you. What kind You're of druid would be out in an accursed place like this with the zombies I... and the blights? Someone who is acting as a warden of the land. The one we're looking for? Apparently. Perhaps to contain them? And who might you be looking for? 
I'm, quickly, I'm blanking on the name. I'm really sorry. Quickly checks notes. I put it in the chat. Right, oh. right off? Right off? Right off? We and were sent here we from the, the, the folk of Phandalin. And what do the good folk of Phandalin need from an old druid in the middle of an ash-coated wasteland? The way to Kragmon there? Keep. The castle. Castle? Castle. 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 Well, which is it? The castle or the keep? The castle. The castle. No, the castle. An ally question. is being kept at the castle, so sort of a keep, but it's actually a castle, I think. The spider stole him away from us. <laughs> Not a literal spider, it's a... Yeah. I see. Them the ones in black masks and cloaks? Very possibly. Hmm. Are we in the right place? Or is there another who might be a druid who would know this area? There is. And she starts to speak and you will hear a, a warble from behind her as a twig blight runs out from the cover to try to stab her in the back. Um, before you can react, she's going to just snap her fingers and a ball of fire is going to appear in her hand and she's going to throw it over her shoulder. And it's going to go light the twig blade on fire and the twig blade's going to scream and run off into the brush. Wow. Kind of gave up the game there, didn't I? A little bit. I'm Radar. And you most certainly are not in any place I would call the right place. Do you have food or tea? We certainly have food. Here. Uh, Sidri will go over the horse and start. Not out uh, in the we... open. Come to my camp. Oh. Okay, we'll follow and you. while you're doing that, come up with a good excuse why you bring an undead girl with you. She looks down at Carmilla. That's awfully rude. Alessandra's looking at her very confused because she did not set off her divine sense in the slightest. I know she's a little pale, but looks happy. She's a damn peer, you spoony bard. <laughs> ah, you do know the old ways. Aye. Well, Ella's going to assume that Whatever is causing this is probably the Sanctum Sage on her mouth and wet a cloth and wipe it off and see if that helps. Hmm. The Lich Bane. Hmm. Probably an allergic reaction. Follow me. My house is the one to the south. Strength check and I'll throw Carmilla over my shoulder. Okay. Mm -hmm. Throwing Carmilla over your shoulder. We got horses too. You could throw me over a horse. That's well, I have to at least like get you up. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. high, right? So that's a nineteen plus three. So you don't. Need so you walk but... over like he's looking to help, and then just like see what's happening. Like, nah, I'm good actually, and just go get the horses. <laughs> all right. Gathering all of your things up, you proceed to the south, and to Radith's watch post, where hopefully. You'll find out exactly what the hell is going on here and how she can help you. But we're going to do that next episode. So, uh, folks, thank you so much for watching. That is this episode of Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. Um, so Sanctum Sage, also known as Lich Bane, is something that I made for this game because, Krista, you are going to uh, PAX Unplugged next week. So you are going to have a nice nap. Um, <laughs> after all those nap 20s, yeah. you need to nap. <laughs> I got two. That's pretty good for That's me. Like a nap twenty. Nap twenty. Oh man. <laughs> I wish I could nap twenty. Oh there God, will be questions right? after this. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so folks, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fendelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk. Next episode is going to be a hoot. I hope you can join us for it. Uh, a big thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon, because Patreon is how this stream continues to thrive and grow. A big thank you to our divine producer, my mom. Hi, mom. How's it going? Our demonic producer, 
Bricarious. Hi, Bricarious. How's it going? To our Wizards of the Patreon, Tammy the Forever Clerk of the Ink Goblin, I have to say you're magical and uh, you've cast a spell on me. And to our High Council of the Patreon, I have to say, hey, Taryn. Hey, buddy. Hey, Amberthist. Hey, Raven with Baubles. Hey, Karasha Urquhart. Hey, Chef Aladeth. Hey, Larouk. Hey, Sorcerer Sanguine. And hey, Mike Baxter. I think I love you, but what am I so afraid of? I'm afraid that... You won't have any more people joining you on the High Council of the Patreon, so better, you know, abate my fears and join today. Um, I don't know. I was trying to go somewhere with it, but it was funny. Um, so, folks, that's going to be it tonight. We will be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, well, actually, we're going to be back in a week. Only a week. It's just a week. Um, so we'll be seeing you very soon. See you tomorrow night for Shards of Nerd and Wednesday for the finale of Dragonlance. Good night, everybody!